Welcome everyone to Omaha, Nebraska, home of the NCAA Men's College World Series, and we are at TD Ameritrade. All the red has moved from outside the ballpark, inside the ballpark. They lined up hours early. An enthusiastic fan base, in fact, both. Tonight we begin the best of three. Who will win, Arkansas or Oregon State? Moments. They come and go. Arkansas with an emphatic victory over Florida. They can define a legacy and last a lifetime. LSU wins the College World Series on a home run by Morris. To live in the moment means not to dwell on the past. Ever since I last out last year, my focus has to win a national championship. It means to enjoy and savor every minute. I'm blessed with the opportunity, and you know, I'm just going to go out in this pitch and enjoy my last couple games of the whole. To make every moment count, we must embrace it. It's a national championship on the line, and it's down to this. Oregon State is rolling. Face the catch. Who will define theirs? The College World Series Finals. The long season has now entered the final stage in game one of the best of three College World Series finals. The NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. We've been playing at TD Ameritrade since 2011. Arkansas will try to win their first College World Series title against a team that won a couple. Back in 2006 and 7, Oregon State is once again just a couple of victories away from bringing the championship back to the Pacific Northwest. Not going back to Florida, that's where it resided for a year, but the Gators, the number one overall seed, were denied. So they've gone home with six others. The magical run-ins for Mississippi State, boy, were they super when it came to eight, nine inning comebacks. Oregon State's offense, one of the best in the country, as is these kids from Arkansas, dominated, in fact, by underclassmen. We look forward to seeing how this last chapter gets written. We came here with Mississippi State, Carolina, Washington, Florida, Texas Tech, and Texas, they've all gone home. So we are down to our final two. And for the eighth consecutive year, there will be a new College World Series champion. Good evening, Laura Rutledge joins us shortly. We are really excited after last night's rain out to be <laughs> knowing we're going to play a game. Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson. Let's focus on the teams now, Arkansas, in this offense. They've only played three times in two weeks. Rust versus rest. It appears as if they like the rest. They love the rest. And you talk about underclassmen earlier. Well, these underclassmen for Arkansas have been spectacular. Combined 16 hits amongst both Casey Martin and Dominic Fletcher. These guys have been an impact, not only on defense, but also in the base pads and at the plate. We're talking next level. We're talking underclassmen that we're going to see at the major league level soon. Why? Because they have all the abilities and they're showing it here in Omaha during the College World Series. It's been spectacular to watch. No doubt about it. A couple years until they find their way into minor and then major league baseball. Fletcher and Casey Martin's numbers 16 for 28. Meantime, it might be next season that we see some of these Oregon State players in the major leagues. They are loaded with prospects. It's a big league lineup. And when you look at Oregon State, it's an offense. It was one of the best in the entire country. And the reason is because of these three first rounders right at the top. Nick Madrigal heard his name called very early. The fourth overall pick to the Chicago White Sox. He's the all everything second baseman. You see Trevor Larnick in right field. Caden Grenier, the shortstop. The best one long term may not be any of them. It's Adley Rutschman, the sophomore catcher. Oregon State has shown throughout this tournament that they have as good offense as you will see. 351 would be the best average that any team has ever had here at the College World Series since we started playing at TD Ameritrade. It's a club that can do absolutely everything, and they've showed it all the way through this run. For more on this Oregon State team, let's go down to the field. Here's Laura Rutledge. Yeah, KP. Pat Casey, Oregon State's head coach, said, I'm not going to lie, this helps us immensely to have an extra day off due to the weather. Their bullpen had more rest, their starter Luke Heimlich more rest, and also Stephen Kwan, their leadoff hitter with the left hamstring pull. He is more rested, ready to go back in the lineup today. As for Arkansas, their bullpen certainly a little bit more rest, too, and that helps out. But one thing to keep in mind, if this were to go to three games of a series, Isaiah Campbell, who was excellent for them here, could start a game on Thursday. Both teams say that they've benefited from this extra day. 
I know we did. We're certainly well rested. So let's tee it high. Let it fly. Let's play for a national championship. First pitch, Arkansas, Oregon State at the College World Series comes up when we come back. Arkansas and Oregon State, 47 and 19, 18 and 12 in the SEC. Oregon State, just another one of those ho hum 50 plus win seasons. They came here last year with 54 wins and they could not get the job done. They also didn't have the guy that's going to be on the mound last season. This is Luke Heimlich, who is on the mound tonight. And he has had a tremendous record when it comes to what he's done on the field, off the field. Little different story. During the 2017 postseason, he excused himself from play following a report from the Oregonian newspaper identifying the pitcher as a registered sex offender. In 2012, at age 15, Heimlich admitted to sexually molesting a six year old girl. Last month, Heimlich denied molesting the girl to New York Times and the Sports Illustrated reporters. This was his quote. I pled guilty to it, but ever since that day and even before that, I've denied ever committing the offense. I stand by it. I feel confident in who I am. I know the truth of the situation. And if I'm not focused on what other people say and what other people read, ultimately, I'm going to be all right, end quote. The victim or her family, neither have made any public statements since the Sports Illustrated article was published. So they didn't have him last year. He is on the mound tonight. One of the better lefties will deal with an offense that has hit both righties and lefties. That's Blaine Knight. He'll pitch for Arkansas. Take a look at their road here to Omaha. Their first CWS final appearance in a long time. Fletcher's been great, 8 for 14, two homers, eight RBIs. Their starting pitching has been a strength 2-0, 3-6-0. Oh, oh. The way this works, double elimination format. If you lose, you're playing four or five games. In Arkansas's case, they didn't lose. They've only played three times. Our Capital One batting order, we've already talked about Fletcher. He hits fifth in the lineup for Dave Van Horn. Everybody else around him can put it over the wall. Yeah, and Hessen Kerstad this season has been fantastic. Ever since he got in that uniform in fall ball, he has not stopped hitting. Hasn't picked it up so far in the College World Series, but any time now, this kid can carry this ball club. We've kind of gotten used to pitching duels, scores where teams win games with two or three runs. Have the feeling that's not going to be the case. The wind is blowing straight out to center field. Ideal conditions for all these fans that have waited now an extra day to cheer on their team. In a lot of ways, it's going to feel like a home game for Arkansas. A lot of red here. Just a six hour drive north from Fayetteville, and there were plenty that made the drive. There was a joke the other day in the newspaper that said the last one out of town turned the lights off, and it feels like that's been the case. Plenty have made the trip up, and they are loud. 94 home runs this Arkansas lineup hit during the regular season. 167 of their 452 runs came via the long ball. Eric Cole will lead things off. He hit 14 home runs on the season. He's out of South Lake, Texas, a junior at 5'11", 195. The Royals, Kansas City, selected him in the fourth round of this past draft. Last two years, Heimlich's been eligible to be drafted, and he was passed over. First pitch of the World Series Finals. Strike one, fastball looked good at 93. No secret, early on, 6 o'clock game, you see the shadows. They're going to be a factor in the first couple innings of this ball game. Well, Heimlich is a guy that throws a lot of fastballs. It's 75 to 80 percent fastballs, can get up to 95 of that pitch. The secondary stuff primarily relies on a plus slider. Into the glove, another one right at 93, and Eric Cole's behind 0 and 2. Travis Katzenmeyer, the home plate umpire, hasn't had to make a call yet. Perry Costello is at first. Chris Koski, the umpire at second. Joe Burleson is at third. Veteran crew, they've had a great job, and we got additional umpires in the finals down the lines. Right field, Barry Chambers. Left field, Billy Van Raphorst. What are you looking for from Heimlich, given his two starts in Omaha have not been good at all? Fastball control. Fastball control and the ability to throw strike one, because when he does that, that's when he can expand the zone. The fastball gets a little bit better, and he starts to work corner to corner. But fastball control is something he did not have in his first two starts. Felt better in his second than he did his first. 
This is a kid that over the course of the season has 19 starts. 16 have been quality starts. Neither one of the starts here have been, and you see the difference in the numbers. A .96 whip entering the College World Series. It's been a very different story in his two short starts here. As you'd expect, these two teams, very good two-strike hitters. 2-2, two -two, jam, and a foul ball. Although Arkansas has made a living here at the World Series attacking before they get two strikes as a team 426 batting average with two strikes it drops to 222 they tend not to go very deep on counts 31 hits of their 38 have occurred on four pitches or fewer we're about to see the sixth pitch of the at bat How about Cole now works a full count three and two Given Heimlich's lack of success at the College World Series, the first batter may be huge for the rest of the night. On the ground to third, that's Gretler. He throws to first, and there's one down. Michael Gretler, the 10th round pick of the Pittsburgh Pirates at third base. And now Casey Martin, the third baseman. He's only a freshman and he acts like an upperclassman. 5'11, buck 79 out of Arkansas. And a 5'71 average at the College World Series. Wild swing and a slider in the dirt. Now that's the first slider he's thrown yep. in the game, and it was a good, effective one. Fletcher trying to attack early, knowing that predominantly he throws that fastball. Stephen Kwan is back in center field. That's a big story for Oregon State. Really his first game starting here at the College World Series since he hurt his hamstrings. And they've struggled a little bit in the outfield without him. He is a difference maker. Indians liked him enough to take him in the fifth round. He'll hit leadoff for Oregon State. Oh and two. Wild one in the dirt, he swings and misses, and Rutschman will throw down to first. Heimlich looks good early. So first to bat to Eric Cole, seven pitches, seven fastballs. Eddie, that one three pitches, three sliders to get the strike out. Solid dosage of sliders down and in. Remember, Arkansas has not faced the lefty in more than two weeks. And they're facing a really good one at that. Here comes Heston Kerstad, and he talked about him at the top, the left fielder, the freshman out of Amarillo, Texas. One of those dudes that just feels like he was born to hit, and he has grown a great deal since he was recruited as a 150-pound high schooler. Inside corner called strike one. Committed to Arkansas as a sophomore. He stood 5'10, 155. His dad, Dave, is 6'4, 250. They figured he'd probably grow a little bit. And he has. He's behind 0 and 2. They've been giving him a solid dosage of, of fastballs to Kerstad. He's been sitting back. Looks like he's been looking off speed because in the SEC, they've been they threw him a lot of off-speed pitches. Yeah, over the course of the year, as Kerstad's numbers stayed consistent, he did see more breaking balls. Now three pitches right here from Heimlich, two fastballs, a slider to finish, and a clean first for Luke Heimlich. Ground ball out to start, then a strikeout of Casey Martin, strikeout of Heston Kerstead. Wayne Knight will head to the mound and face the Oregon State offense when we come back. Back there's Pat Casey, 24th year at Oregon State, lost the opener to North Carolina. You lose the opener, you're in real trouble, but they've won four straight elimination games, and they have pounded the baseball. 48 runs in those five games, led by the number five here tonight, Adley Rutschman, 10 RBIs. As we take a look at the Capital One batting order that he's throwing out there, we mentioned what Quan can do in the outfield. How about what he can do at the top of this order? He can, and he has a sore hamstring, and they're going to test it early on, but Stephen Quan is a contact hitter. 16 strikeouts in the season. This guy will put it in play, and he'll cause a lot of havoc on the bases. Uh, 16 strikeouts is sort of burying the lead. There are 50 walks to go with those 16 strikeouts. He's been really good. So Blaine Knight, what will his 
approach B. Yeah, this guy's been really good too. Blaine Knight's 13 0 this year. The 13th win came against Texas in this College World Series. He's been a giant killer the whole year. He's beat some of the best arms in the country. Mize, Singer. Now he faces another. Low 90s fastball slider anytime. And those are the two primary that you'll see from Knight. He's not going to throw as many fastballs as Luke Heimlich will, but fastball control has been elite for Knight all year as well. So a real good start for Heimlich on the mound. It's the first time that Arkansas did not score in their first inning in their now four games here in Omaha at the World Series. So Quan stretches those hamstrings, the left hamstring really tightened up on him the other night hit a ball to the outfield and really didn't move out of the batter's box and slowly jogged towards first he did a lot of convincing of Pat Casey that he was good to go another day of rest certainly helps him and here comes the junior out of Fremont California third baseman Casey Martin playing way in on the grass anticipating perhaps a square to bunt and maybe a bunt to go with it. Knight's first pitch, pretty good velocity, 94 miles an hour in there for a strike. He can show you some of that. Knight's fastball velocity will be very similar to Heimlich's. I think the difference in the challenge that Blaine Knight has had this year is carrying that fastball velocity into the sixth, seventh, and eighth inning. You guys were talking about Stephen Kwan and how he's getting that left hamstring healthy enough to play a lot of ice, a lot of rest, a lot of work on that hamstring. But one thing that Arkansas brought up is especially when he's out there in center field defensively, they may try to test him, maybe try to hit something over his head, and also try to see if they can test him when he's at the plate as well. Knight has thrown three fastballs, 94, 95, 94. City of Omaha in the background TD Ameritrade open for action in 2011. It was announced earlier this week there'll be a Major League Baseball game here next season during College World Series week. The Royals and Tigers will be here. 0 2 inside 1 and 2. Just a terrific night to play baseball and aerials. From high above TD Ameritrade. And you can see it looks a lot like Bomb Field, the home field for Arkansas. A lot of red. Vaughn is gone as Wayne Knight picks up strikeout number one. He did it on fastballs. Make that 17 strikeouts now in the season for Stephen Kwan. This time pitches elevated up and away, a little run to it. Stephen Kwan looks like hitters are not picking up the ball well we talked about those shadows not only will it affect the hitters but also the left fielders as you see the sun right in their eyes. Caden Grenier steps into the box junior 5'11 188 Henderson Nevada. 322 on the season does have five home runs. Fastball at the knees on the corner strike one. You're going to get that one stay right there. Carson shaddy the second baseman shaded towards the middle a little bit of a hole between first and second base. One one. Here's a good look at Blaine Knight illuminated on that mound by the sun and then how dark it gets about 10 feet in front of him. He'll lose the baseball. Gone mm. in there for a strike one and two. That's not a good feeling halfway through. That's when you pick up that spin. Can't pick up that spin. You're in a lot of trouble. Then you have 94 to 95 coming at you also with the ability of throwing that fastball effectively in. Makes it tough on the hitters. So given what we just saw with that view could you pick up the spin did you know that that was a breaking ball. No no <laughs> no but the good thing is this I mean if I'm a hitter right now I'm jumping in that box because I I just ordered a cloud from a catalog and yep. it just showed up right <laughs> yep, now. Yep right on time. Let's go throw the ball. 
Get in that box. Where is that catalog to order if you need a cloud? I haven't seen that. I mean, you can get anything you want now, but I know you can get a cloud. Back page. <laughs> Got to get all the way to the back page. 2-2. Two -two. Stays alive with a foul ball. Pre-ordered. My stomach turns a little bit every time I see a cloud. <laughs> I don't want to see any We're clouds. We're good tonight. Yeah, we're fine. It looked just like this last night around this time. <laughs> Knight looking for a second strikeout. After getting the leadoff hitter, Quan. This one's popped up. And the second baseman, Carson Shaddy, goes out. He's called off by the right fielder, Eric Cole, who comes in to make the play. We had LSU here last year against Florida in the CWS finals. There was a lot of purple and gold in the crowd, but I don't know that it was this predominant for one team. I mean, this is a, it feels like about 80, 85% Arkansas fans here. It, it really does. So this is what they call, and I saw them at the elevator, a lot of the fans, Bomb North from right. Bomb Stadium. Beautiful facility in Fayetteville, and they've made it their home here in Omaha for this week. Nick Madrigal, the junior, 5'8", buck 65. He bats now, looks at a first pitch up. This guy's been a great hitter. He has flirted with 400 as a batting average all season long. Hitting 395 now on the year, 396 in this tournament. A terrific contact hitter. And when Quan was out, he was the leadoff hitter. And Pat Casey talked about how if we can get Quan back, it allows Madrigal, who really likes to swing it, back into that comfortable three hole. He rips one to short, fielded cleanly by Biggers. He throws him out. Madrigal hit it on the number, but he's retired. Back to back, one, two, three innings. Four, five, six coming up for the Razorbacks when we come back. Heimlich off to a good start for Oregon State on the mound with a 1 2 3 inning. We've talked about his other two starts here not being so good. And so Pat Casey, his coach, came to him and said, Hey, you don't have to pitch if you don't feel comfortable. He said, I need to know that I can rely on you. So they had a conversation man to man about that. And Heimlich said, Look, I'm ready to go. I want to be out there. I want to be pitching for my team and contributing to a national championship. So Pat Casey felt very confident in putting him out here in this spot today, guys. The important that conversation he had with him, he told us a couple of days ago, that had to happen. They'll face four, five, six. Luke Bonfield will lead things off. The cleanup hitter. Oh! There was an article in the local paper, and given that the Kansas City Royals AAA affiliate is here, the Royals Dayton Moore was in town for that announcement of that major league game next season. That the Royals had expressed interest in perhaps pursuing Heimlich as a free agent signing. Wasn't drafted again. He picks up a strike at the bottom of the strike zone, even it up at one and one. As the last two years, he's been the best pitcher in college baseball. He was again this year 16 and 2, 16 to 1 when he came into this college World Series. Last year, the ERA was significantly better than anybody else in the entire nation. The stuff is undeniable. Twenty seven and three with a one eighty one. He's been the Pac-12 pitcher of the year each of those two years. Look at the strikeouts to walks. Two hundred and eighty two strikeouts. Forty eight walks for Heimlich over the past two seasons. Rutschman oh, no. Wadham appealed down to first. No swing. Said Perry Costello. So it's even up at two and two. On fields the designated hitter out of Skillman New Jersey. Get some power, obviously, hitting in that cleanup spot. Nine home runs this season. The big powers really come from the guy who's on deck. That's Dominic Fletcher, the center fielder. And that's his home run swing. Three and two. Look out, three, two. 
about Oregon State. Look at Gretler at third base. He's off the line. Usually third baseman with left handed pitchers. They tend to be more on the line because those sliders guys tend to pull it. A lot of doubles happen through there. Bonfield right up the middle exactly where Grenier was playing and for the second time a fielder cleanly throws the ground ball the first one down. That brings up Fletcher the center fielder his brother as you know David plays for the L.A. Angels. He's got 10 home runs this season. And I just show you the peaks and valleys. How about an 8 for 14 College World Series and a hitless super regional against South Carolina. So something happened on the airplane got him warm sophomore five nine out of Cypress California the breaking ball misses. And not the batting practice is an indicator this dude was launching during batting practice. Yeah it was a light show today for Arkansas and BP wind was blowing out ballparks playing the way that it really has much of the last few weeks now back to back sliders here. First time the Fletcher comes to the plate the one that he'll really handle is the fastball middle away likes to get those arms extended a little bit early he'll take that pitch and pull it to right we've already seen him do it twice and put it in the seats seats in this series. That's a good one. One thing I was curious to see before this game started and once it started is they have four left handed hitters in this lineup. We said it earlier they have not faced the lefty in more than two weeks. Last time they faced him was June last week June 11th. Oh. 95 ball jumping out of both Blaine Knight and Luke Heimlich's arms tonight. Yeah, there's some adrenaline going so far and control for the most part has been very good. The one thing for Arkansas against lefties or against righties the, the offensive numbers are almost identical. They hit 302 against lefties 301 against righties. Mm. Right here, right here, right here. That's where he doesn't want it. He does not want that fastball that crowds him. You can see the reaction right there of Fletcher. Because those arms extend a little bit early. If he gets to the fastball in, he's usually going to hook it foul. Trying to pull those arms in at the last minute to get the barrel to it. But I, I'd like, if you're going to throw in the fastball, I like crowding him with the fastball. Good one. Third strike out of the night for Luke Heimlich. Well, he sped him up inside, and as a hitter, once he speeds you up there, you think he's going to go away. Instead, throws a slider, freezes Fletcher. No chance to see the ball right there coming out of the sun into the shadows. And now Carson Shaddy, the second baseman, the redshirt senior, right out of Fayetteville, Arkansas. He's wanted to play for the Razorbacks since he knew what a Razorback was. About four years old, he started dreaming about doing this someday. His dad played with Dave Van Horn back in the early 80s. Shaddy went, as his dad would describe it, under recruited. Bumped into Carson playing in the state tournament. Didn't have any money to offer him, but said, We'd love to have you if you want to join us. Walk on is now a huge part of this Arkansas team. Hot. And the underclassmen got him to this championship game. Carson Shaddy has not done much during this College World Series. He showed off and showed up in a big way during the Super Regionals. If they're going to win this game, he's going to have to be a big part of their offense. There's some flash too. I mean, he can leave the yard in a hurry. Late on that, even at 92 miles an hour. Luke Heimlich's locked in right now. He's got three strikeouts already, which matches his previous two College World Series starts. Looking for more. One, two to Shaddy, and that one's going to find the seats. Love the scouting reports on both teams. They've done their homework. We talked earlier when Luke Bonfield was up that Gretler was off the line. Now Gretler at third base. He's on the line. Carson Shaddy more of a pull hitter. 
Very difficult son for the left fielder. Kyle Novak if once hit up in the air he is staring right into it. Mm. Ball, 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 ball. Eddie, that was that pitch you were talking about, that slide around the inner third, that if Shaddy gets to it and he hits it on the ground, he's probably going to pull it to Gretler at third base. That time just got the top half of it and fouled off. As a former pitcher, Kyle, can you feel what Heimlich is feeling when everything so far is working? Yeah, and then a lot of times it means you're not thinking a whole lot. You just you take the baseball, you, you nod yes and, and go to work. Body language, completely different pitcher than the first two games. After he releases the baseball, he's got a little jump to a step also. Oh, how do you ask for time? That's when the shadows are, are non factor. All right, we go, two, two. <laughs> Heimlich doing a really good job of moving the ball up, down, in, out. I think and that, adding and subtracting. Yeah, I think that was a change there. I mean, sometimes he'll throw that backdoor breaking ball that fights to get back over. That one looked like a changeup that Shaddy was out in front of. He doesn't throw a ton of those, and if you see a Heimlich changeup, it's usually going to be to a right-handed hitter. Three strikeouts already. Oh. Nope. Inside, three and two. Look out, three, two. Pretty good location, but Shaddy wasn't offering. Jared Gates, the first baseman, waits on deck. Oh, Good at bat by Carson Shaddy, the first base runner for Arkansas. The College World Series Final, Oregon State versus Arkansas Game 2, tomorrow at 7 on ESPN. Hope you join us then. See who's got that one nothing lead. Game 3, if there is to be a Game 3, will be seen at 5.30 Central, 6.30 Eastern Time on Thursday on ESPN 2. So Game 3, if there is one, 6.30 Eastern Time, 5.30 Local Time, ESPN 2. I actually like that 3 2 pitch. It was a good call from Oregon State, but a better take. Yes. From Carson Shaddy. Jared Gates has already hit one over the wall here in Omaha. First pitch he sees. Good one on the inside corner. Swings right underneath it. So far, both lefties that have faced, that, that have been out there against Heimlich, both have looked uncomfortable against his pitches, especially when he establishes in like that. Gates a 385 hitter here in Omaha. 5 for 13, a 252 regular season hitter. That one is ripped to right field and right into the glove of Trevor Lardock. First hard hit ball elevated, but it results in an out. We'll see Larnick and Adley Rutschman when we return to Omaha. The NCAA College World Series is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? And in part by McDonald's new 100% fresh beef quarter pounder burgers. Cooked right when ordered. Hi, right, Michael Conforto, the former Beaver, says good luck to my brothers tonight. You've got Beaver Nation behind you. Leave it all out there. Go, Beavs. Conforto, one of the great Oregon State hitters of all time, currently in the Mets lineup. They lead the Pirates by a score of 2 to nothing tonight. Don't forget, Dodgers and Cubs will follow us. So, Larnick and Rutschman, you play 140 games roughly on average at the major league level. If you took their numbers from college and extrapolated them out, uh, you would see that they would put up sort of just below MVP type numbers at the major league level and both of these guys will be major leaguers. Rutschman could very well be the number one overall pick next season as a switch hitting catcher. Larnick's already been selected and he was a high pick. Right fielder absolutely hammers the baseball. Like that. 
First pitch swinging into right field goes to the wall. Trevor Larnick into second with a double. Professional hitter at the collegiate level. Larnick's 18th double of the season. First pitch fastball elevated. Larnick spins, and this is what he can do. It's elite bat speed from Larnick down the right field line, but Eric Cole has to cut this ball off. And even if he does, Larnick may end up at second base. The route, Eddie, when he started, I thought he was going to cut it off easily. Instead, the ball gets to the fence. The minute it gets to the fence, Larnick's standing on second base with an easy stand-up double. Larnick's got now 19 hits and 41 at-bats in the NCAA tournament, hitting almost 500. And here comes Adley Rutschman. We showed you those numbers. A 70 RBI season. Look at the growth, Rev. Year over year. The talk last year about Rutschman was, man, this kid's going to be really good someday. Batting average has jumped almost 160 points. The power number's right behind it, and 80 runs driven in his sophomore year. Ten of those here. So rutschman got a chance with Larnick at second to break through first. Fastball still at 93 miles an hour from night. And it's not by accident those numbers went up. He dedicated himself to changing his approach at the plate, changing his stance, his hands, the weight distribution in his legs, dedicating himself as a two sport athlete to one sport and one position behind the plate. This guy's a talented athlete. Yes. There's not a lot of names to get thrown out as potential first overall picks in the draft. Adley Rutschman's will get thrown around all year next year. Switch hitting catcher with power, a big time arm, and the growth year over year has been monumental. Good pitch there from Blaine Knight. Slider right underneath the bat path of Adley Rutschman. No balls, two strikes, no two. Knight will show you two breaking balls. That was the slider. He'll throw a slow curveball sometimes to try to steal a strike. He usually will not see that slower curveball in two strike counts if he's going to try to finish a guy off, especially a left hander. Try to wrap that slider around their back foot. Elevate the fastball here. Rutschman's got an RBI in all five of the College World Series games that Oregon State has played. All five looking for six. Behind 0 2. Yes, yes, he did. did. Good pitch. Filthy slider and a big out for Blaine Knight in Arkansas to send Rutschman down without any contact. And this. Kyle, it's knowing how to pitch right here. Yep. It's that check swing, couldn't hold it right there, but the recognition of the spin is just not there as a slider late break. Rutschman, first time he faces Knight. Three pitches, one out, runner at second base. When he has that slider going, it feels like a night like tonight where you're going to have to get the fastball. Larnick ambushed a first pitch fastball early. It feels like if you're going to get Blaine Knight tonight, it's probably going to be off of the fastball. Tyler Malone, the designated hitter, bats now. The sophomore out of Roseville, California, 5'11", 180. And Malone has had uh, the spotlight on him here in the postseason, and he has delivered big time three homers in the tournament. Lead off double Larnick he is leading off second base boy that slider he's locked into something here. Both pitchers doing a great job getting ahead in the count early. See Fletcher out there in center field one of the best center fielders in the country. Guys, Blaine Knight's last start here in Omaha, his first start here, he did not have his best stuff. And they said in the third inning, his throwing arm had a tricep cramp. They tried to massage it out, tried to get through it, just never could. So in preparation for this start, did a lot of massage before this game of that throwing arm and the tricep in particular. Also, a lot of hydration, guys. No sweet tea. No okay. sweet tea. Wasn't that Dave Van Horn the other day? Not allowed. We're not going to let him have it. Game day. Another Great. slider there and steals a strike. One and two. Yeah, that was at Hoover, wasn't it, during the SEC tournament? Yeah, I believe so. Told his team, it's hot, we're going to play a lot of games, stay hydrated. Dave Horn, Van Horn out for a run one day. 
when he was finishing his run he bopped into a little restaurant and there was Blade Knight who had this vat of sweet tea in front of him. <laughs> well what, what are you doing? Didn't we talk about this. <laughs> I just finally forgot. <laughs> Tastes good though. Slow roll and a short. This is going to be trouble. No throw and an infield single for Tyler Malone. I'm not sure Knight saw that off of his bat. Kind of a weird reaction from the pitcher. Maybe he thought it was hit a little harder. Well, you look where he falls. He falls off yeah. towards the first base side. He had no chance at this. Biggers wisely did not throw this baseball. I like the mindset here, though, Eddie. Just a little, yeah. uh, a little. Little pump fate. right there just to see you never know if, if you get Larnick going anywhere off of third base maybe you can steal an out instead Larnick didn't go anywhere. Third baseman's Michael Gretler big chance here for Oregon State early Heimlich looks good on the mound they got runners at first and third. One down. Bonnie Lake Washington the senior 6 2 185. Biggers and Shaddy up the middle they'll crowd it. Double play situation right here. Casey Martin playing normal depth. I'd play a little bit in. Oh. The reason why I'd play a little bit in, slow roller, I'd go home with it. If it's hard, straight at me or to my left, then I would turn two. Can't guarantee a double play from that position there unless it's hard hit. Malone doesn't run much at first base, just one stolen base attempt on the year. Yeah, Madrigal's got 15. Quan has 14. No one else has more than eight when it comes to steals for Oregon State. Oh. 2 and 0. Kyle Loback is on deck. He was not in the original starting lineup for yesterday's game, which was postponed because of rain. And, uh, had Casey overnight or sometime today said you know what I'm going to take no back and put him in left field and bat him eighth. So no back in the lineup. After not being in the lineup yesterday. Should be a pretty good pitch to hit a 2 and 0 to Gretler with Larnick at third and Malone at first. That one is over the head of the shortstop and Oregon State on an RBI single for Michael Gretler go up one nothing on Arkansas. And it was a slider, a 2 0 slider at that, one that he wanted to throw for a strike. Bottom quadrant of the zone. Gretler, give him a lot of credit. 2 0. A lot of hitters usually roll over on that or swing and miss through it. He stayed with it, hits it off the end of the bat, gets himself an RBI. Now you have runners at first and second with one out. It's a good pitch, too. It's exactly where Knight wanted to throw it. Try to steal a strike on the outside part of the plate down. Gretler stayed on it, got enough of it to give the Beavers a lead. Nearly three quarters of the game one winners go on to win the College World Series title. And Oregon State is the first to score here in game one of the best of three. Kyle Novak, the eight hitter, the red shirt senior. With some home run pop in that bat. We'll play left field out of Lake Oswego, Oregon. And a couple of beavers on the pond. Malone now at second. Gretler at first. Back to back seniors in the lineup. Not only did Travis Katzenmeyer let us know it hurt, he told us right on the thigh. He let us know exactly where that was. Right. And Cook knew too. That's why he's out to have a little fake chat with Blaine Knight right there. <laughs> yep, right there on the inner thigh. That'll leave a mark. Second inning has been a very big inning for Oregon State through the course of really the season. They have outscored their opponents 68 to 17 in the second inning, the largest run differential of any inning. 68 17 with that first run, and they're looking to add to that total. Fastball in there for a strike, 0 and 2. He 
took that like he was sitting soft. Go again. And if you look at it the way the 2 0 pitch for Gretler. I think he was sitting slider also. It's wonderful with the runners in scoring position. They might have something on Knight saying he might go to the slider once too many times. One thing with Knight is, is he does not really like elevate the fastball. He likes to live at the bottom part of the zone. This is a spot where you would ideally elevate the fastball. We're right down the middle, throw right by him. Third strikeout for Blaine Knight. No back retired. Seen the velocity was 94 95 in the first down a tick here 91 to 93 for the most part in this inning 93 mile an hour fastball to Blaine Knight just rear back and let go. No back couldn't catch up second strike out of the inning third of the game for Blaine Knight. Think about major league players that played for Arkansas Keuchel Andrew Benatendi of course. He has played great and Benatendi with an RBI double tonight. He sent out his. Well wishes to Arkansas. Oregon State you saw that graphic terrific with two outs. I mean like ridiculously good with two outs. Zach Taylor the nine hitter looks a slider away one and oh the junior out of Sherwood Oregon six two two oh five. Right, the third round pick of the Orioles, the 87th selection overall in this 2018 draft. And no given that. He was expected to go on the first day of the draft, right? And and last year was a draft eligible sophomore. Turned out a lot of money to come back here to his junior year. I was talking to Blaine about it the other day and said he was sitting with his family. He was expecting to go day one, got a call. Then had to wait. And the way that the draft goes now, it's the first two rounds of first day, and then the third round starts the following day. So it was not a situation where Blaine not expected to go to sleep that first night, not have heard his name called. He was really mature about it, though. Laid back, said, Listen, I, I can't control it. All I can control now is what happens moving forward. I do think, though, Time. he's a steal in the third round. Because right, he's going to add weight. I think that velocity is going to go up a little bit more in the fastball. We know the controls there, and we know the sliders there. Now you had a little bit more velo. As he kind of gets that that mature weight when he's 24 25 26. I, I think you're going to see him shoot through a system. It's a system the Orioles you can shoot through right now. 93 1 and 2. When you think about organizations that could use some arms the Orioles would be near the top of the list. Oregon State's got one already in. Larnick with a double scored on an RBI single by Michael Gretler. As Heimlich waits to go back on the mound. Good pitch on the outside corner. So after giving up that lead up, double. Knight bears down, strikes out the last two, no back in Taylor. One nothing Beavers through two. Part of our family, you know, we treat him like a brother. You know, words can't describe just how grateful I am to have him in my life. I'll be close with him for a really long time. He means the world to me, man. His family and, and Drew himself are such great people. They've kind of took me under their wing since I got to college, and I love him. We all love him. You know, he loves us. Oregon State talking about Drew Bodigheimer, the nine year old who had a heart transplant at age two, and he is the inspiration for this Oregon State team. I actually was behind Drew and his dad as they were rolling through the concourse a little bit earlier this week, and his joy as he rolled through here and got so many high fives from everybody. Guys, he's a true celebrity around here. People stop and drew all over the place wanting to get a picture with him. Just a, a really neat guy, part of this Oregon State team for sure. Yeah, we saw something like that with TCU a few years ago, and it's just wonderful to see the college students relate to those kids on that level. And we certainly wish him nothing but the best in his recovery from heart transplant surgery. Start the third inning, and a wild pitch there as Grant Cook steps in, the junior catcher at 243. 
Pirates picked him in the fifth round of the draft this season. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> more pain. <laughs> There's no mistake in that sound, that's for sure. Oh. Third inning's been a bit of a bugaboo as we listen into the pain and suffering. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> uh, two and one. Entering today, State has allowed 23 runs in the College World Series, and 13 of those have come in this, the third inning. 8 9 1 due up for Arkansas. Grant Cook, center field. Quan not going to be able to get to that. And a loud round of applause here from the Arkansas fans. As the Razorbacks get their first hit of the night. Grant Cook has to love that. He's struggling throughout the College World Series offensively. First at bat here in the finals gets a base hit. First one for Arkansas. Number nine hitter is Jax Biggers. Think about his ability to sacrifice. They don't do it a ton. Three times this season he's been asked to do it. Fastball right at the knees for a strike. Different approaches for these two teams, Rav, when it comes to sack bunts. Oregon State has 62 as a team. Arkansas has 21. They don't do it a whole lot. Well, he tried it once. We were there yeah. in Fayetteville. Yeah, that's, you see that's, the finger. that's why the, <laughs> the index finger on the left hand is tape all over it. That left hand wrapped all the way around the bat. Ball got in on his finger, broke it, stitch him up. Not a pretty sight when it he took that not. batting glove off. You know, when he took that glove off and saw the finger for the first time, the, the look on his face told the whole story. <laughs> the odd part is he could probably now remove the bandage and actually wrap it around the bat, but he's become comfortable hitting this way. That's a good one there. Heimlich, two fastballs right at the knees to get ahead 0-2. It looks kind of cool, too. When you get a cut to one finger off your batting glove, just imagine being that guy that doesn't like to be pointed at. Oh, I know that guy. You. I know that guy. Oh, <laughs> 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 close. Close one there. Heimlich doesn't get it. He's got to see You see Rutschman just glide over, try to sell it. Yeah, his moves back there are really good. So are Cooks. I mean, we, we've got two elite defensive catchers today. Grant Cook single just a minute ago to center field, but I think his glove is ultimately going to get him to the big leagues from behind home plate. Bradley Rutschman, it, it's the whole package. A lot of Buster com Posey comparisons. Yes. Which is about as big a compliment as you can give to any catcher. In the dirt, good block. Nowhere to go for Cook. Rutschman. That's how they teach you to do it. Get that chest over that baseball. Don't let it by you. Yeah, watch him deaden it too, and that's the key. I mean, the, the best pitch blockers, that baseball doesn't go very far. And if it does, it goes right out in front of him because that's ideally what you want. You want that thing to almost land on home plate. So if you got to make a throw, momentum is taking you to it. I talked with Sandy Alomar about catching a lot, and he tells me, he goes, you want to know the difference between a good catcher and a bad catcher? The good catcher always tries to block that pitch. The bad catcher tries to catch that pitch. Here you go, right at the knees, the same pitch that he got his first two strikes on. Luke Heimlich picks up his fourth K of the night. All afternoon, and you see it right there again. Right at the knees, calling the third strike. That's all hitters and, and pitchers want. Consistency behind the plate, and Travis Katzenmeyer, home plate umpire, has been able to do that so far in two and a third innings of of baseball. A lot better Luke Heimlich tonight than his previous two starts. Back to the top of the order for Eric Cole. Ball 
strike one call number eight grew up really as a hockey player his dad was a big hockey guy so he grew up as a hockey player. He also then discovered Eric liked to hit in his backyard and he hit both righty and lefty. So he encouraged him as a nine year old let's, let's become a switch hitter. Cole spent his nine year old little league hitting only from the left side the first at bat as the lefty was awkward it also resulted in a hit. So he went all in on that. And the Kansas City Royals now make him the fourth round pick. I think he's going to find his way to the major leagues. I don't know if he's a starting corner guy in the big leagues. He could be utility outfielder, but Cole gets lost a little bit in this lineup because of the flash that is within it. But he still hit 14 home runs, drove in 51 out of the leadoff spot. It's not a burner, doesn't run great. Routes use it pretty good in the outfield. What what do you attribute Eddie you play college ball what do you attribute to that big jump we've seen it a couple times with players here what's the big jump between one year and the next Kyle was talking about Andrew Ben had a huge jump to first year to second year. Well for me it was from the second to the third year and it was a sense of knowing that I belonged that I belonged in that lineup you go in with you go in and you already know who you are at the plate which is very important your stance right. changes a bit mine went from bat on the shoulder to then bat off the shoulder uh, and, and we see the adjustments we see it uh, throughout every hitter from Cole we see it also from Rutschman behind the plate he did it in the offseason when he went to Cape Cod League struggled in the Cape Cod League while he was making the adjustment 2 one Cole jammed Brettler to second to Madrigal to first and a 5 4 3 double play for Oregon State to get out of the inning. Second time fastball in on the hands of Eric Cole and the second time it's gone to the third baseman. Gretler starts it. Madrigal takes it. Taylor finishes it 5-4-3 to end the inning. It's one nothing Oregon State. No He's got pressure. a guy out there that he has caught a ton, knows all the tendencies. Be great insight for the viewer listening to David Ross in that booth as we continue play here. Bottom three. College World Series game one best of three. Carl Ravich, Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson, Laura Rutledge down. On the field, Stephen Kwan struck out his first time up. He faces Blaine Knight. Time he squared to bunt. Be interesting with a guy who's got a rough left hamstring to lay a bunt down and then try to sprint and run it out. A lot of times they'll square to bunt to try to yep. draw the pitcher to throw a ball. Not only that, Carly. You see a 2 0 count. Look where the third baseman Casey Martin is. He's playing in. You show bunt, you keep him there. He can slap the ball by him at third base. First baseman Gates playing not too deep at first. Fifty walks and now seventeen strikeouts. Pretty good for right? Juan. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> that'll okay. play. That'll play. That's what you want your leadoff hitter to do. Four sixty-seven on base percentage for Quan coming into this ball game. Up the middle, fielded nicely by Carson Shaddy. He throws him out. A couple of steps to his right, and he throws out Quan. I think this is one thing also that Coach Casey wanted to see. Yes, he made contact. But how will he run down the line? Right out of the box. Stephen Kwan. Pretty quick and fleet footed. You can say he's tightly wrapped. That hamstring is. Didn't look too smooth though running, but at least it's good enough to play center field. That's the first time we've really seen him have to test it, I think. On, on the ball to cook it to center field, he took a few quick steps and I knew he wasn't going to get there, so pulled the shoot. So he could play it off of one hop. That time, the first three or four steps out of the box were full speed. When he saw that Chatty had it, it looked like he pulled up a little bit, which is understandable. Slider up in the zone, strike one. Caden Grenier, the shortstop, flew out to right field his first time up. Does Grenier stay at shortstop at the next level? Yes. Yeah, and I, I really think the glove is the bigger thing that got Grenier drafted. The question about Grenier is whether or not the bat is going to play as he get, goes up through a system, but I do think the glove fits it short. Oh! 
as a chase there. Another good look as the sun begins to set a little bit here in Omaha. The nation's heartland. A little cloud has showed up, but the left side of that infield and outfield, when the cloud disappears, they are still bathing in sunshine. Haven't seen any balls elevated to the left fielder yet. So you on Sports Center we showed some video. You went fishing with Blaine Knight. We had a fun day with Blaine and Matt Cronin, the closer. Yeah, it's uh, Blaine's pretty comfortable when he's out fishing. He was a little bit more comfortable than I was. <laughs> he. Uh, <laughs> well, what do you mean? What do you mean he was comfortable? Well, he 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 won. Oh, that part. Yeah. That. Yeah, he's like a fish whisperer. Ah, he, uh, he is that. Yeah, he, he, he caught was, ten. Fi is that was that right? He caught ten. Oh fish? yeah, he was throwing a spinner, and and I mean it didn't take three three four casts for he had his first one. It uh, about five minutes in, Blank caught his first fish. We were there about two hours. About five minutes before we left, I I caught my only <laughs> fish with, with an assist <laughs> to Matt Cronin, the closer, who we both had to take our shoes off and go in again <laughs> because I had wrapped it around a log. It was impressive. You wrapped. The line around the log did. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's pictures of it, so I can't lie about it now. But yeah, that's exactly what happened. And he saved me. He went in and just grabbed the fish. He did. Yeah. Snapped the line. Must well, have been pretty cool for them, right? I mean, they just they like to fish anywhere. They yeah. had probably not fished in Omaha before. Or were you in they Iowa? Had gone, no, we were in Iowa, but they they had gone once already. I and mean, they got their little travel rigs. It, we had a lot. We had a lot of fun. 3-2 to Grenier. Good one popped up. And Fletcher. Two down. So one guy's got a fish in his hand. Yep, the other two don't. That was, that was kind of consistent throughout the course of the day. <laughs> oh, hey, look, there's another one. <laughs> nope, nope, still, still nothing there. Is he this, a talker? This was. Does he like to talk about it? Is he to sort of rub it in a little bit? Like, uh, not, I mean, no? he rubbed it into Cronin a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. He. Those are. Those are kind of the two that Respectful they'll always find. Respectful of his elder. With. He wasn't gonna. He was. Hunt, fish, throw sliders. Pretty. Pretty simple life approach for Blaine Knight. Well, they get some fishing down in uh, the Maryland area. He'll find it. Here's Madrigal with two outs, and he looks at a fastball up for a ball. Yeah, KP, they may not have been rubbing it in your face when you guys were actually out there fishing, uh -oh. but a couple info. of the guys today saying, man, that KP, he really can't fish. And, you know, the best part was they were like, he's the one who invited us. So we thought maybe he knew how to do it. Ouch. Wow. Laura. <laughs> Just reporting the facts. <laughs> Some stuff you keep yourself, Laura. I mean, the <laughs> mic's open, like the whole world can hear that. <laughs> Best part about it, he goes fishing in Beaver Lake in Fayetteville. Not by anymore. the way, by the way, not yeah. anymore. During this College World Series, Army Corps engineers actually changed the name to Omaha Lake. I like that. So there's no more Beaver Lake in Fayetteville, at least not this week. <laughs> Trying to get through the top of this order, Quan, Grenier, both went down, Madrigal. That's going to get into the seats. All right, Eddie, from a hitting perspective, let's give a little scouting report. What makes Madrigal? He's a three hitter. He doesn't have a ton of size at 5'8, 165. How does he project? He projects very well at the, at the major league level. And one of the biggest reasons he understands the strike zone well is not afraid to swing with two strikes, covers the plate. Unbelievably had six strikeouts the entire season six strikeouts. Yes. He missed half the season with a broken hand, but still 167 at bats still very impressive uses the entire field not afraid to go the other way. One two center field Fletcher stepped in now he goes back and for one second it felt like it might get over his head. The ball did get over the wall, but only with the help of Fletcher. We'll be back to Omaha after this dinner time. I've had a lot of you know, family friends call me over the past couple of days and say uh, they've already bought tickets. Our last game, 
our Pizza Pro out there put up 5% every hit or 10% for like every RBI I get like off pizza. So the whole town's like text me like, come on, like you can do it, this and that. So I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Pressure. All about the pizza, guys, Pressure. for Casey Martin from Lone Oak, Arkansas. A lot of Lone Oak people here in Section 126, the TD Ameritrade. And by the way, uh, Pizza Pro has a double-decker pepperoni pizza for $12.99. I just thought maybe wow. KP needed to know that, and maybe everybody else up there, too. Thank you. KP will bury himself in some pizza. Loves this uh, double-decker. Yeah, that's, uh, that's hard to turn down for the Pizza Pro. We got a lot of eating going on. We saw a baby going to break, chowing down. Oh no, Jackrabbits. 0 oh, and 2, and Heimlich looks good here in the yeah, he does. top of the fourth. Working quickly, throwing strikes. Nasty pitch. Good slider in the dirt. And Rutschman throws to first for the out. Five strikeouts for Luke Heimlich. This is a kid that uh, Dave Van Hart wasn't sure if he'd get him to, to campus. Casey Martin, when it went through the draft, thought maybe he would be taken high enough that ultimately he would sign and go. He didn't. He will be in two years. Casey Martin stays healthy. This is, I mean, this is a top ten overall type talent. Lone Oak, Arkansas. Population 4,200, which is left than the GA section here at TD Ameritrade. Little different setting than Lone Oak High School, that's for sure. The kid has adjusted great, though. Huh. Here's Heston Kirstead. He's been one of the best hitters all season for Arkansas. And Eddie, it just looks like he has not yet got comfortable here the last couple of games on what pitch is coming to him and when. Most of the at-bats have started 0-1 this College World oh. Series against him. Right there, pitch. Close could have been called either way. Ever been in that position where all of a sudden you kind of locked up? You don't know when to swing uh, and what's absolutely. coming. Absolutely, every player goes through it. How do you get out of it? I mean, what, what's the, the beauty of this game is you play it every yeah. day. You got to have oh. short-term memory. You have to be able to turn the page quickly, and that's one thing that Kirsten has been able to do this freshman year. Eston Kerstad with a K there, silent J. Norwegian descent. Parents settled in South Dakota. Mm. Dad, Dave said you get a piece you of land and you call it your own out in South Dakota, but then he said it was a rough life. I still say South Dakota should have been left for the Buffalo. That was Dad. Come on now. Yep. And how do you get Heston? He said Heston heavy equipment, and then there was Charlton Heston. That's where Heston comes from. Three and two. I like that, Charlton. Heston. Charlton Heston. Rather than naming him Charlton Kirstead, we went Heston. Kirstead. Did him a favor there. <laughs> Easier to spell when you're a kid. <laughs> you don't have any. You don't have any kids named. Char no kids named but uh, Charleston. <laughs> Ouch! Almost sounded like he got him on his fingers, but there was no reaction to it. Look at the knob. Well, if it would have got in his hand, it would have been strike three, too, because he swung at this. That fastball inside earlier in this at bat, it did not look like Kerstad wanted it in there. Went back to it right there, got the foul ball. See if Heimlich stays right there. Game one best of three college world series win game one 73 percent of the time you go on and take home the title. Luke Bonfield on deck and you saw just a second ago Dominic Fletcher grab a bat there he is.
Three, two, center field. Quan says, I got it. And he does. Two down. For more coverage of the College World Series and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. The greatest show on dirt have the heels of Carolina here. They checked out Mississippi State. College baseball news, so Mississippi State did not keep their interim coach who got him here to the College World Series. Gary Henderson, they went in a different direction. They did, yeah, and, and they did it very, very quickly. Uh, Chris Lamonis, a former head coach at Indiana, was named the head coach at Mississippi State. Jake Gotro was a hitting coach for Mississippi State this year. Looks like he will stay put, which is a very good thing. I would say this about Gary Henderson. Huh? The job that he did for Mississippi State this year was pretty incredible. When you take over a team week two of the season and ultimately get them as one of the final three teams playing in the country. And while he was not named the head coach at Mississippi State, I do not think it'll be long until he's got a head job somewhere else, and he deserves it. Will he stay as a pitching coach there? I don't think so. No. A one to Luke Bonfield. That's down one and one. Oregon State has not really benefited in spite of the fact that they are in the College World Series finals from good starting pitching. They really got one good start. It was the freshman Kevin Abel who went seven innings against Mississippi State. Oh. And he was really good that day. But yeah, besides right. that, their starters, I mean, it's really been their bullpen that's that's picked them up and, and carried them to this point. Been different tonight. Heimlich has been on point. 3 1 count coming to a guy, Bonfield, who's got nine homers this season. See if he challenges him. The left fielder, very, very deep. Kyle Novak. Got a lefty on deck and Dominic Fletcher. Last time he was in a hitter's count against Carson Shaddy, it was a 3 2, it wasn't 3 1. Went slider down and in for ball four. The lefty on deck. Foul ball. 3 1 slider. It's been a very effective pitch for Luke Heimlich tonight. Let's make sure he gets the count right. 3 2. Scoreboard out and Right field he looked at had said 2 2. He knew what the count was. Now it says 3 2, and we're all set to go. Beaten into the ground. Grenier. Got him. Back to back. 1 2 3 innings for Luke Heimlich. Three and a half in the books. Beavers won. Arkansas nothing. For me, baby. Yeah. Save it. That's your warning. I got it. I got it. Are you talking to me? No, I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking. Stop! That's right there, baby. Ah. Oh, I got you. Give him a couple minutes there. He's, that's not a good spot. He just took one. Hey, that almost got me. You got to block that. Save! Save! I got it! I got it! Oh, on his arm! Oh. <laughs> Welcome back to the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. I love that. A lot of good sound Love there. That. My favorite has always been the not talking to you. No, no, we're not. I like no, we're the not. Save it. The save it. Save goal. it. Save it. <laughs> oh boy. Umpire has been very consistent. Yeah, it has been good. Use very of instant good. replay is not something that is emphasized at the College World Series. The SEC play and the SEC network does a lot more of it. The Division one baseball committee is going to meet in July. There's a real good chance we expand what is used here for instant replay. There's certainly enough cameras, 28 cameras, so that's no reason not to do it. I think by the time we're here next year, we'll do a little bit more of it. Larnick, first pitch swing, skies it to left. Left fielder has no idea where it is. No idea. It bounces off the dirt and goes over the wall. 
Heston Kerstad, victimized by the sun. He never saw it. And Larnick is aboard with his second double of the night. And that's a big problem. And you use those glasses, those shades. It's hard to see the ball off the bat. And then once you see the ball, you don't see the ball off the bat because of the shadows. It goes right in the sun. You see the you see his shadows. He has no clue. He's asking for help. And there's a trick to this when you're playing the outfield. It's if you're going to wear the glasses, you actually have to put them a little bit lower. So you're looking straight at the hitter without the without the, the glasses on. You usually have the flip glasses. These kids don't know how to use that. They always use the Oakley style glasses. Well, we had talked about how brutal yes. left field would be with that son, and that was a perfect example. Heston Kerstad never for a second knew where that ball was. And Arnick. if he does, it's an out. Right. I mean, there's plenty. I know the ball landed on the warning track, but still, that ball was in the air for a long time. If he sees it, that's an out. Instead, Larnick has leadoff doubles in each of his first two at-bats. And that's a college World Series record fifth double for Larnick. Here's Rutschman. He was up in the situation in the second and struck out. This time into center field. Fletcher got a good jump. Little deke of Larnick. He'll stay at third as the ball comes way into the catcher. And now you got first and third, nobody out. When you're a left fielder and you have the sun right there, but you have the, sh uh, the shadows in the infield, one trick is actually you have the hat on, you can put your shades like this. So you're looking at the hitter, and then as soon as that comes up, you can pop them up once you see it goes in the sun. When you have those the glasses on, it's hard to see the ball off the bat. And that's what happened to him right there. He had no idea where that trajectory was. And because of that, he couldn't get to the vicinity of where that ball fe uh, fell. I mean, he was completely lost. That's that a, ball went, and it's a bad that's feeling. That's a lonely feeling. It's a really bad feeling. Wes Johnson, a pitch and go job for Arkansas. And I think this is the absolute right time to come out. And when that ball comes off the bat, there's a feeling on the mound when the ball goes into play. And you immediately in your mind think it's an out or it's not an out. When you think it's an out and it's not an out, it's a quick reset. And then you follow right after that. Rutschman singles at the center field. Good time just to slow everybody down here for a minute. Yeah, and a good shot there of Kerstad going over to talk to Fletcher, basically telling him, I couldn't see that ball as the two outfielders converse about the sun. The College World Series final, Oregon State versus Arkansas, game two, tomorrow at 7 on ESPN. Well, so far it's kind of gone according to form. Uh, Larnick has been the best hitter in the World Series, followed immediately by Adley Rutschman. Larnick's got two doubles. Granted, one of them could have been an out, but in any event, he set a College World Series record now with five doubles. Rutschman delivers a single. You got first and third. Both pitchers pitching pretty well. Arkansas's offense has been held in check. They have one hit. Now Arkansas is trying to prevent a crooked number. Oregon State with a good pitcher and a very rested bullpen in a great position now to increase that lead and allow Heimlich give you a couple more innings and then turn it over to a lights out pen. Tyler Malone singled his first time up. Close one. Knight wanted it. Instead, one pitch. and one. Really good pitch right there. That changes a lot. 0 2 to 1 1 right there with that pitch. Had plate over the knees. Yeah, he steals a strike there. You get in a two strike count. Knight's going to try to punch him out with that slider down and in. Just as difficult it is for the hitters with the shadows, it's still. And play behind Berlin Knight. It is also for the umpire. Malone very comfortable at TD Ameritrade. He's got three home runs. No swing, two and one. Nice job by the designated hitter, the sophomore out of Roseville, California. Big part of this game in the bottom of the fourth. 
One thing Oregon State and Heimlich have done really taken that Arkansas huge crowd out of this one. By allowing just one hit. Fly ball to left is a, another dangerous proposition is cursed dad in the middle of a sun baked left field. Quick bat, huh, Eddie? Tyler Malone? Quick bat, pitching him backwards right now with runner in scoring position at third base. He's gone to the slider early. And just like the same MO in the, in the second inning and third, he goes to the fastball late. He was back foot, too. And I think that's one thing to watch with Malone. If Knight wants to strike him out with a slider here, a lot of times you're going to throw that back foot slide. The one thing to watch based on where Malone is in the box is that back foot is way on top of the plate. So where you would normally throw it, may hit it. 2-2, two, two, smothered. They'll go to second for one. Back to first, nobody there. Had a chance perhaps to come home to get Larnick. Instead, Jerry Gates opted to throw to Biggers. And we have still one down. You know what? It's not going to matter. Him back. You're it's right. not going to matter. Larnick is going back to third base. Chris Koski's a second base umpire and immediately, immediately called interference. So when that happens, you got out at second, out at first, base runner goes back to third. That changes the entire ball game. Watch the slide. That's the key here. Rutschman's the base runner. Does he go straight into the base? Well, he didn't slide. And I guess ultimately that's the call. I don't understand how that's interference. Again, he's not even close to the bag yet. He's ducking. He's getting himself out of the way right there. He's in no harm's way of the second baseman. This is the second time that Oregon State gets called for interference at second base in this College World Series. Reminds me a little bit of the LSU play from last College World Series, but clearly it Rutschman's choice. If you're not going to run or slide, he, he attempted to duck, but just get all the way down. I'm sure that's here's, what Pat Casey's being told. Well, but here's exactly the way the, the rule reads. Yeah. The rule reads on any force play, the runner must slide on the ground before right. the base in a direct line between the two bases. So if you read the rule the way that it is written, you have to slide. I'm not saying it's right. I get it. I the get way it. That but it's look written. where he ducked. I know? understand duck, but if the rule says you have to slide on the ground and he didn't slide on the ground, ultimately you can't do that. I wonder if he'd be allowed to peel off towards right field. Could he peel off and totally get out of the way, or is well, that also interference? I, I don't know the immediate answer to that. I mean, we see it plenty of times, and, and in that case, you, you would hope that it's okay because the, the whole intent is to not bother the throw. But at any rate, we Huge saw play. this in the finals last year. That's what I said. Remember that we yeah. saw this in the finals last year where a play like that totally changed the course of the ball game. LSU didn't score a run. Florida goes on to win the national title. That is a giant play on one that I thought anyway the gate should have come home. I would agree. So it goes down as a 3 6 4 and instead of having one out and a two run lead there are two outs and it's still one zip. Now Gretler still can bring Larnick in. He stands there at third base. Gretler singled. And has an RBI already. First pitch outside ball one. We'll see and circle that if that's a deciding play in this one. Well, and, and now you got a shot in the arm on the mound. Because when, when you think you got one out, you're down two nothing. Now you look up, it's a one nothing, it's a one nothing lead still, and you got a chance to get out of this inning. Then we see a little bit more velo right there from Blaine Knight, that last fastball, 93 miles an hour. We will talk with Pat Casey. This is up high. And obviously that will be one question his interpretation of what happened out there versus the rule maybe one more time because I'm sure there are people at home who are wondering like what was that rule just read that rule one more time on any force play the runner must slide on the ground before the base in a direct line between the two bases must slide permissible for the sliders momentum to carry him through the base and the baseline extent but ultimately the wording says you must slide on the ground that had to have been what the call was. Duo slider in there. Chris Koski and Pat Casey had a fairly lengthy conversation. In the meantime, Blaine Knight throws a 2 0 slider. Same pitch he threw to Gretler in that second inning where he got the base hit to drive in the only run of the game. This time executed it, took a little bit more off. Gretler was ahead.
you almost understand the intent of that rule if you're not sliding or peeling off to right, which you see at every level, you do run the risk of, of injury. You run the risk of a yep. shortstop throwing the ball right at you. That's the risk you would take by not getting down. Well, I would say there, I think there was zero intent on Rutschman's no, standpoint. None. I mean, he was just trying to get out of the way and, and kind of kind of got sped up in his mind. Big pitch, 2-2, two -two, runner at third, two down, bottom of the fourth. Yanks it three and two. changer that possibly could be strikeout of Gretler Pat Casey is livid and he is yelling out at the second base umpire Chris Kosky intensity starting to run real high here at the World Series you're watching the College World Series presented by Capital One joined by Oregon State head coach Pat Casey and coach what was the explanation you were given on the interference call he told me that the uh, runner ran into the fielder Said he went right into him, and I watched it on the video, and didn't appear to me he was trying to stop and duck and avoid anything because he couldn't get there because the ball was hit so hard. So I don't understand the call. Luke Heimlich tonight. What's different with him tonight than the other two starts here? Well, um, he's throwing strikes. And he's able to command a little bit of a breaking ball tonight. I think he's a little more competitive, maybe a little bit more relaxed. But uh, you know, got off to a good start. Maybe that helped him out. Thanks so much. Thank you. No, unfortunately, that, that wasn't a okay. great explanation. Well, so here's the thing. It, it, to me, if that is the explanation, I disagree with the call. Of course. That's I, I think the way that it is written, if the explanation was he needs to slide and he didn't slide, I get it. Sure. If the explanation was he was going into the runner, I don't think that happened. Guys, if you're a runner and you're running towards second base, you don't know when the ball's coming right. at all. You don't know the timing. The ball's happening yeah, behind coming, you. Yeah, exactly. All of a sudden, that ball's in front of you. He's like, okay. There's just... Fletcher. First pitch pops out to the first baseman. All right, let's listen in to what the explanation sounded like. No, 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 he did. He went right into the fielder. He went right into him. He didn't, he didn't even get to the bag. He ducked so he didn't avoid him. I just watched on him. So he he went pushed. right into the field. He didn't even get to the bag. That's what I got, Pat. You, you, so you're saying he got to the bag? Guys, I'm, I'm telling you right now, as a runner, you're looking and you're going to slide to the bag. There is no way, there is no way that you're going to slide way before the bag when that ball zips right past you like that. Okay. There's no way you can. You're going to get hurt if you try to do that. Because ultimately, you don't know where it is. Right. Because your natural if the reaction ball's in is... Front of, if the ball's in front of you, you see if it's it. a shortstop, Correct. absolutely. Well, and I think your point, which is really good, is when you don't see it, you're going to slide at the base. You're not going to slide 15 feet in front of it normally. And when you can't see where the ball's coming from, you're assuming that your natural slide's going to be at second base. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's that's why the rules, I understand what they say, but you cannot take it literally. Plus, what he just said right there makes absolutely well, no sense with what happened. Here's the reality of it. It's an absolute game changer. I mean, because you get out of it in that spot. And that's unfortunate. You get confidence from a Blaine Knight standpoint. He pitches out of it, doesn't give up anything. If, from, for, if you're Arkansas right now, you're still one swing away from tying this thing up. Right, so Rutschman sees the ball is caught. He still continues. Maybe the ball gets thrown into the outfield. As soon as he realizes the ball's behind him, look, I understand the whole thing. I think if he peels away towards the outfield, we don't have this conversation. He did not run into the fielder. He clearly got in the fielder's way, which is not grounds for interference, but he didn't slide. And it's funny, it felt like the umpire cited a reason which wasn't exactly what happened when he could have cited the rule which would have applied. He didn't slide. I agree. I just feel like that's why we see so many guys peeling off to the outfield. We've seen players, major league players, I, I get sliding it, like 30 feet before a second. But the ball in the play is always in front of you when that happens. 
It's always in front of you. To when the that second happens. baseman on a ground ball. To you the see runner, it. exactly. Right. You I get see that. it. That's why you peel out. So Shaddy walks. He has walked twice. Those are the only two walks that Heimlich has allowed. Heimlich on one pitch got the very dangerous Fletcher, which was a huge start to this inning, given it felt like the momentum perhaps on that one play had shifted back to Arkansas, but not yet. Good pitcher can slow down any momentum that a team feels. And Heimlich's been outstanding so far. Here's Gates didn't look good his first time up he popped out to right. Actually they didn't look good in the first pitch the fastball inside and then he hung him a slider. Yeah, that first pitch fastball did not look good. Mm -hmm. As Rutschman goes out, what do you think about what Pat's answer was regarding Heimlich? Uh, like more engaged. Yeah, I, I tell you, I mean, the other thing that gets you more engaged, you strike out two guys in the first inning, you go one, two, three. I mean, then everything slows down, and you go back to doing what he's done the entire year. Yes. The other thing that I've noticed, and it's changed a little bit in this inning, but the pace is different. I mean, there's a there is a confidence in the pace that we did not see the first two times that Luke Heimlich pitched. In this College World Series, and the stuff's better, and that helps too. When you can really trust your stuff, clearly he's been able to do it tonight. But now he's throwing five straight balls. A six. See the velocity? We were 94, 95 in the first. That last fast fastball was 89. I think Nate Yeske, the pitching coach for yep. Oregon State, recognized the same thing. As he goes out there, he'll be serenaded by Arkansas fans. Four hundred and nineteen miles away, about a six hour ride. The more you come to the heartland, you realize five, six, four hour rides, that's like nothing. Oh, that's that's, nothing. that's a, that that's a nice nothing. little drive. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Fill up outside of Kansas City and you're here in no time. I was passionate about baseball as they are in the SEC and Arkansas, Mississippi State, LSU. There's a very special relationship between the baseball fan in Corvallis, Oregon, and this team from yes. Oregon State. A lot of their fans are staying in the same hotel we are, and they have such a terrific relationship with that baseball team. That's the long trip from Corvallis here to Omaha, and they have shown up and supported their team all season long and are doing it here. Now let's see if that meeting helps out 2 0 for the first. Down the middle. Huh? Two and one. 89 miles an hour. Took a little bit off. Arkansas in business. The ball comes all the way in. There's nobody covering first base, and now getting back to first base is Jared Gates. But all of a sudden, the momentum is clearly on Arkansas side. A high hopper over the head of Zach Taylor. And because Taylor is holding the runner on, that's the only reason this gets over his head. Comes off, goes straight over the top of his head. Madrigal almost got there. Was shaded all the way to the right side. Was pushed onto the pull side for Gates, but instead. Bounces over the head of 
Taylor. Shaddy goes first to third, and Arkansas has their first real scoring opportunity in this ballgame now in the fifth inning. Have we lost you? You're upset about that call at second base, aren't you? No, no. You haven't lost me, no. I, I was just thinking, you know, you, you think about that play, you think about also everything that happened. Pitcher didn't even cover first base, which we had also not even talked about. But right now, you have to give a lot of credit to the Arkansas offense. They're feeding off these fans. Here at TV Amer Ameritrade Park. Here's Grant Cook. He's the number eight hitter, the catcher. Started like perhaps he was getting a fastball, tried to slow down on the breaking ball, and he's behind 0 and 1. First time tonight, the Razorbacks have had a runner in scoring position. Arkansas has been a score early team. Meetings 1 through 6 to get a plus 21 run differential. Oregon State's done a lot of their business late in the game. Cook out of Fayetteville, Arkansas, 34 RBI on the season. Rips this one in the left, and we're tied. RBI 35 in from third is Shaddy, and it's a new ball game. Cook's giving the fans a reason to get off their feet. Two line drive base hits. Tonight, this one a big one. After being pretty much silenced the entire College World Series, Grant Cook has shown up to play. We talked to Dave Van Horn about it on, on Monday morning. And he said, you know, Cook's been great behind the plate. And we've told him, just don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You just handle the pitchers. You just handle the pitchers. But we know that it's bothering him right now. He came up with the biggest swing of the night right there for Arkansas. Now two for 12 at the College World Series. He had been one for 11. Jax Biggers, the shortstop, struck out his first time up. Call strike one. Just foul. 0 oh and 2. Interview with Dave Van Horn. Laura will speak with the longtime Arkansas coach. Took over in 2003. Had a couple years left on a contract that already the athletic director said we're going to revisit and extend when the season is over. Two of the most respected and best head coaches in the game going head to head in this one. Back to back singles for Gates and Cook. They're at first and second. Arkansas has got their first run of the game here in the fifth. And the 0 2 on the way to Jack's Biggers. Last time struck out Biggers on a fastball down in the zone. Looking. 81 pitches, no activity in the Oregon State bullpen. And that'll get into the seats. Shouldn't be a problem now. That ball. Off the bat, looked like it might be heading to the left field. Shouldn't be a problem now with the outfield and the sun. 
It's now gone down. You can see the enormous shadow there in left field and right field. And I shouldn't bother Quan given the angle of where the sun is going down. Bottom of the order has done the job tonight for Arkansas. This is the nine hitter. That got him on the arm, and the bases are going to be loaded. A one two pitch breaking ball that stayed up. And Oregon State now, after the 19th hit batter by Luke Heimlich this season, goes to the top of the order with the bases loaded. They're going to have to get somebody in that bullpen. There's no one out there right now. They're going to have to run, make a quick sprint out of it because this could get out of control in a hurry for Coach Casey and the Oregon State Beavers. And of course, given that time we had off, everybody for Oregon State's rested, and now a whole handful are running down there. Chamberlain is going down there. Looks like Eisert yep. is going down there. Brandon Eisert 37, Chamberlain 34. Now you turn the lineup over Eric Cole. They grounded out twice. Play started by the third baseman. Double play in the third. Good pitch to start him off. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Both at bats, Heimlich has thrown the fastball in on the hands of Eric Cole. Both times it's been a ground ball to the third baseman. Gates, Cook, and Biggers aboard. Eric Cole in a mini slump, 0 for his last eight at the World Series. Third on the team in RBIs, 51 on the season. Hit him. That hit, hit him. him. That hit him. I think it hit him. It's going to bring a run in. And it is. Cole got hit by a pitch. 20th hit batter by Luke Heimlich. Arkansas has gone on top. 2 to 1. Another breaking ball. And this one he just spiked. I mean, the pitch before it slipped out of his hands, it went up and in and hit Biggers. This one, this one he just tugged, held on to it a little bit too long, goes into the dirt. Cole's not going anywhere. It's the one thing for Heimlich this year. He's walked his 26 guys in 125 and a third coming in, but he's now hit 20. Back to back right there gives Arkansas the lead. And a very, very dangerous Casey Martin. He has set him down twice with strikeouts. Casey Martin's seen six pitches, five sliders. Yep. And both times he struck out, the strikeout pitch has been the slide. Out of the zone, too. Got him chasing. The interference play, which led to a double play in the bottom of the fourth, seemed to turn the momentum around in a game that Oregon State was in control of. Since then, all Arkansas, and they're loaded for Martin with one down. Slow roller to second. He was going to go to second, had it slip out of his hand, another run in, and an error on the second baseman. 3-1 Arkansas. Out of the corner of his eye, he sees Cole running at him, peeks up really quick, tries to be too quick with it, tried to get that lead runner at second base, knowing it was going to be a short out, and does not safely grab the ball. If you look at it, the transition is done away from his body instead of close to his body, and that's why that ball was not being able, was not able to be controlled. Oh, and here's the other thing. With ball. Martin running, you're only getting one out. Yeah. I mean, in, in that, you are only getting one out. Yes, he had enough time to go to second base if it's fielded cleanly. The easier play there is probably just throw Martin out of first. Here's Kerstad. First pitch. Blocks. And right now, Luke Heimlich needs to have go somebody go talk to him. Right now. I would go get him right now. Christian Chamberlain, the lefty, warming up. And here comes Nate Yeski, and we're making the move right now. Wow, did that unravel very quickly after that critical interference call at second base.
Up until this inning, Arkansas had one hit against Luke Heimlich, and he had five strikeouts. That very well be the last time we see Luke Heimlich on the mound at Oregon State. He leaves. We'll come back with the bases loaded. Certainly feels like a home game for Arkansas right now. The momentum has changed dramatically after getting just one hit in the first four innings. They've gotten two. There was an error as well. Two hit batters. Luke Heimlich, who looks so solid, is out of the game. For Oregon State, they have made nine errors in the College World Series. No other team has more than five. And now you turn it over to Christian Chamberlain, who was at least considered to be a starter in this game. He's been really strong as of late 19 appearances this season in ERA of four and for a freshman to come into a college World Series game already behind in the count 1 0 with the bases loaded. Yeah. Yeah this is this is not the uh, the interest you were thinking if you're Christian Chamberlain they love his stuff it's a fastball in the low 90s and a true 12 to 6 breaking ball. But now in a 2 0 hole with the bases loaded. Giving up 23 walks in the season. Third appearance at the College World Series. He's gone two and three innings. And again, he'd already had a ball on Kerstad, so that first one makes it two and zero. Oh. And now it's three and zero. Oh. That interference play will show it again, rock the world of Pat Casey in Oregon State. And as you said, Kyle, at the time, it really lifted. Blaine Knight, who may have been teeting her a little. It's been about 25 minutes since Blaine Knight last threw a pitch. Ball four, not close. 4 1 Arkansas. As Chamberlain comes in and throws three straight balls to walk Kerstad. You know, it's interesting down that Oregon State bullpen, there's nobody throwing. And we saw Brandon Iser go down at the exact same time that Christian Chamberlain did. I, I think now you have a difficult decision if you're Pat Casey. You look at the board, you're down 4 1. And I understand we're only in the fifth, but Iser's one of your main bullpen guys. How much longer can you go with Chamberlain if he can't find the strike zone? And if you go to somebody else, can you go to the guy that maybe is your best in the bullpen right now with what is at least now a three run deficit? Been a very bizarre last 40 minutes here at the College World Series with the interference call. Two hit batters, couple of walks here, and another ball to Luke Bonfield, your cleanup hitter with the bases loaded, the designated hitter, and the senior out of Skillman, New Jersey. Bonfield's gone deep here. He's got nine homers on the season. Begging for it, didn't get it. Two and zero. Tried something different there. Not the fastball, went off speed. Still did not get it in the fans. They're letting him know also. Five straight balls. Ball huh. strike. Dylan Pierce, the lefty, starting to move around a little bit for Oregon State. Really good speed at third base, guys, too, on a ball that would be a fly out to the outfield. Cole can really fly. Uh, potential tag up. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Two and two. Rutschman pumps his fist. Brutal situation for Chamberlain to come in on.
There you go. Good breaking ball in there for a strike. And Bonfield leaves with a bat on his shoulder. You really could see and feel Chamberlain get comfortable that at bat. Hanging slider once those knees gave up on it. Hard to pull the trigger with the hands. Did you see Rutschman let that ball travel to him? Yeah. Caught it all the way into his body. Just waiting for as long as he possibly can because he wants that ball to move as far down as possible, knowing it's at the top end of the zone. If he goes and gets it, he's going to catch it much higher than he ultimately did right in front of his chest protector. Not easy, though. Dominic Fletcher, 0 for 2. He led this inning off by popping out to the first baseman. He's got the breaking ball now working in there for a strike. Four for four game. He is five for six with runners in scoring position. And he currently has the bases loaded. Go back to that breaking ball. Oh, two, yeah. Just don't hang it. Yes, you he did. went. Yes. He went, and they will strand three. Arkansas with a rally and we'll see if Oregon State now can answer good job by the freshman in a tough spot. You're watching the College World Series presented by Capital One Arkansas head coach Dave Van Horn here with us and coach how was that interference call a momentum changer for you guys. Well because it took a run off the board obviously and. You know they had all of a sudden they had two outs runner on third and then Blaine you know got that that third out and got us back in the dugout and uh, you know we took advantage of a couple of walks and a couple of uh, well placed balls and you know we jumped on them. You mentioned Blaine Knight it's his final start in an Arkansas uniform. What have you seen from him so far. Well he's been pretty good really you know they hit he went down hit a slider that blooped it over the shortstop's head they got an infield hit you know that really helped that inning out we had a fly ball drop in the sun and. He's, he's hung in there and kept it close and then we, we put some runs up for him. Thanks coach. Thank you. Thank you Laura. So night back on the mound and you certainly understand the. Different emotions on the spectrum right now for that guy Pat Casey and Dave Van Horn that whole. Inning. They got only two hits did Arkansas. They benefited from walks hit batters. And it's a frustrating frustrating. Game right now for Pat Casey in Oregon State. We'll revisit that interference play, which seemed to turn the entire game around in a couple of minutes. So his last pitch was 7:38. It's now 8:08 here in Omaha. 9:08 in the East. We'll take that rest, though. That's 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 a good reason to sit on the bench for a while if you're playing nine. Strike one to Kyle Novak. All that time off and all of a sudden he throws that first pitch breaking ball for a strike. Great composure right now by Blaine Knight. Strike two. Oh. No back struck out his first time up. So did the on deck batter Zach Taylor. Saying to hit him on the elbow, and the home plate umpire Travis Katzenmeyer didn't agree with it. Oh, 
that's the one you got to get there. Wayne not trying to bury that slider down and away. That one snuck over in the middle of the plate. Oregon State team that has faced four elimination games. They lost their opener, Carolina, and have since won four elimination games. So the one two right off the mask of Grant Cook behind home plate. The grind of being behind the plate. Both men. Yeah. That's off to both of them. Archman and Larnick will have another chance. Maybe two. The one two. Nope. Two and two. Knight is a tall, thin pitcher. He's actually put on a bunch of weight in an off-season weight program. There you go, strike three with a slider. And as Kyle said, he anticipates that to continue as he makes his way through the minor leagues. He picks up his sixth K. Guys, Blaine Knight enjoying that 30 minutes of rest between this inning, and it, he actually spent a lot of the time rolling out his tricep. We talk about how he had the tricep cramp the last time he pitched here, trying to make sure that that didn't happen again. Also, spent a while back up in the tunnel throwing as much as he could. He says that one of the best things that he can do for himself is to throw when he has those long layoffs because it keeps his velocity going, keeps the momentum going for him. He said if he stops throwing for too long, it doesn't work out very well for him. Oh. That pitch came in, Laura, at 95 miles an hour. Velocity's still there. Yeah, that's the first time we've seen that number since the first, I yeah. believe. What's the mindset of a uh, pitcher, Kyle, when an inning like that is going on, and it almost felt like we could all see it happening? Yeah. To remove yourself instead of getting caught up in it by going up in the tunnel and throwing, or do you stay and kind of want to watch it? Um, I, I didn't really want to watch. Now we didn't have a tunnel, so there was nowhere to go. You were kind of stuck in the. Right. You were kind of stuck in the. Uh, <laughs> you in you the played dugout. before tunnels. Yeah, I mean whether you want to see it or not. <laughs> Pre-tunnel area. Uh, Pre -tunnel. I, I I didn't pay a lot of attention <laughs> to it. I mean it, it, it's and I, I think everybody kind of does it differently and. Looking back on it, there were times I was actually annoyed by it, which sounds really stupid because I wanted to get back out there <laughs> and ultimately the score and he runs, like just knock it off. Um, because when you get into a rhythm, you want to stay in that rhythm, but clearly Knight hasn't lost that. 2 1 to Zach Taylor. Oh. Late. Katzmeyer anticipating maybe some pain there. Yeah, what I happened? There was a little uh, <laughs> sort of a groan three <laughs> contact <laughs> angst right there. He thought he was going to wear one on that two seamer, but <laughs> Zach Taylor saved him with a foul ball. Speeds up his bat up now. Watch him go to that slider. Yep. Asking who was up, confirmed. That's always such a slippery slope because the next one seems to come in at that same eye level, but it's like a hair lower. And you get called strike, and you're like, well, you just said that was up. Yeah, but it was a little lower yeah. than that. I, that's a slippery slope. Just a little bit low. <laughs> exactly. Going to get it, Gates. Diving catch up. Oh, what a play by Jared Gates at first base for the out. I didn't think he had a chance to get it, and he went after it like a wide receiver in the corner of the end zone. It's all out. It's College World Series time, and this is the way that Gates has played 
the entire season, keeps track of it, doesn't even worry about how much room he has left and goes into that warning track area laid out completely. Beautifully done right there. Yeah, you can slap an SC top 10 nominee on that one. Oh. We should see that one plenty more tonight. For Jared Gates, Dave Van Horn went to him in the SEC tournament. And he looked him in the eye and said, here's the deal. You are my best defensive first baseman. You are going to play every day. Forget about worrying about checking the lineup card every day. You are going to play. Showed you why he's his best defensive first baseman right there. Play Knight goes over, gives him a little high five, and Gates is back to first. Terrific play by Jared Gates. The umpires appear as if they are going to review this one. And this one is a reviewable play. Any catch or no catch in the outfield or foul territory is reviewable. One of the six reviewable plays. Yeah, no doubt he caught this one. He went on the landing, stuck it. I stayed in his glove the whole time. It was his left knee that he was rubbing after that catch. He takes the glove out now old NFL rules if the ball is used to help get yourself up. That's not a touchdown. Remember, you've got to come <laughs> up with the ball here. Took the ball out of his glove stuck it on the ground. It clearly was a catch and the umpires will come back with their decision on this. And the call stands he's out so a web gem for Jared Gates a sports center top 10 play. Did you guys when that ball went up and he chased it you think he was going to get to it. No I didn't need that not on yeah. first break Eddie, did you have him there. Oh he had a good beat on it that's a good thing but no chance and uh, he really caught up made up some ground. Carl you were talking about the left knee of Jared Gates he was rubbing it a little bit the athletic trainer for Arkansas just told me they're saying it's a bruised left knee right now they expect him to stay in the game quick diagnosis thank you Laura. Wow, bam. <laughs> right. It's bruised. You're good. <laughs> he keeps rubbing it. Strike one to Stephen Kwan, leadoff hitter, 0 for 2 tonight. <laughs> the knee, strike two, and Knight working quickly. Serves it in the left field and a good job by Stephen Kwan behind 0 and 2. Keep the inning alive by sending it into left field. It's big right there. I want to keep the inning alive too, but it, it gets you to the heart of this order. Grenier, Madrigal, Larnick, Rutschman to follow. And Oregon State has done plenty of damage with two outs in this tournament. Caden Grenier comes up. There is another. Rule within the rule book that is the rule that perhaps was being quoted by Chris Kosky at second base. It's rule eight, section four. We'll get it to you after the first pitch, assuming an out isn't made. But check out rule eight, section four, and a force play slide rule as we revisit that interference call in the fourth inning, which changed this game. Renier squares ball one. So under rule eight section four letter C actions by a runner illegal and interference shall be called if the runner slides or runs out of the baseline in the direction of the fielder and alters the play of the fielder with or without contact. I'm not giving Chris Kosky a reason for his explanation but there is a rule which tends to be a little bit more in line with what he was saying. There was no contact that's for sure but he did perhaps alter the play of the fielder with or without contact. When you're into right. Foul ball by about half an inch. 
foul ball, says the right field umpire Barry Chambers. And Barry Chambers was positioned perfectly on this. Watch him rotate. Oh, this ball slices foul. Gets in perfect position right here, reads it, doesn't hesitate whatsoever. Ooh, wow, is that That's close? close. They're going to talk about this I think one that too. That going to get looked at again. Yeah. This one was close. Remember, these umpires are not used to being out there. Usually, four umpires used. I don't know. I kind of think fellas. that's a fair ball, boys. I think that's, that's a fair ball. A little looks, white grass gets buried yeah. underneath that baseball. Now the question becomes, what do you do with Stephen Kwan, the base runner, if it's ruled a fair ball? Here's a better look at it. You're looking for indisputable video evidence. <sighs> Looks like it's on the line. It, it does look like it, it. Yeah. I mean, if you're wondering about chalk, that's paint actually on the grass, so. That's as close as you can have it. Yeah. I mean, when we roll a backstop, it, take a look at it two or three times, Barry Chambers is right on top of it. In, in a spot like this, and I know it is paint, but every once in a while you see a little bit of grass fly up that is right. painted, and then you know that it, that it hit the paint. So, here's the applicable rule. If this is overturned and changed and call fair and results in decisions on the placement of the base runners the crew chief has to use his best judgment to determine determine their locations as if it had been made correctly with the exception of the placement prescribed by rule on a catch or no catch so this is a fascinating one here because Quan has bad hamstrings or a, a bad left hamstring so does Quan, in your opinion get to third base yes. if it's without overturned so you're yes, going to put him at first and third absolutely you would put him yeah. where first and third. Uh, yeah, watch. put him at second okay. and third. What no, 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 no. I put him at third. Well, second and third is a good second argument. Second and third right is yeah. a good argument. Quan's absolutely at third. So I, I mean, I, I think that's that's undeniable given where he was. He's already turning around. Yeah, he would get to third. And to Eddie's point, I, I mean, yeah. where Cole was when you see it, he was playing, was playing just to make sure it didn't go down in the corner. Right. So where he was based on that ball hitting up in front because the the. Foul territory fence goes and kind of cuts back towards the line. Quan with a good hamstring, he scores on that. I agree. Because I don't think there's any way you can put him there. Right. I think you put him at third. Then the decision is where does Grenier go? And I would agree with you based on where Cole was. I think Grenier goes to second. I think they'll play it safe that way. And and all I that believe... being said, I'm not 100 percent sure it's fair. Well, I think it's taken this long because they might be deciphering where do the runners go. On a game in which right now Oregon State feels a wee bit slighted on that interference call. They're trying to figure out where to place the runners. So the call on the field is a foul ball. If they're trying to figure out where to place the runners, then they've already made the decision that it's a it's a fair ball. If you, if you move it forward, you'll see Cole coming to the picture after it bounces. The ball bounces towards yeah, right, where he map. is. That's a yep. close one. That's a good. That's a good debate. Does he go to second or first? I think he goes to second, Rev. Okay. I really do. If if Cole's breaking in on that, if if he sees that that ball's going to hit before it goes down in the corner, then I think it's a different decision. But with the depth that he was in that right field corner, I don't think there's any way that he throws Grenier out at second base. Hey, is that line straight? All right. Well, here comes the crew chief. Fair ball. You can read it. We're going to put you to third. I think they're going to they're going to put Grenier at first. At first base. First and third is what they're going to do. We're going to put Grenier at first base. Yeah. Grenier was sort of surprised by that, and now Pat Casey will ask, "How about second? <laughs> <laughs> So by rule, umpires are supposed to use the decision on where to place the runners using a quote unquote conservative philosophy. 
And again, this is another one of those <laughs> debatable plays for sure. No question about it. It's clearly conservative to put yeah, it in the first. Very conservative. That would be accurate. You, you have to think to Pat Casey's argument. Quant needs to be at third. There's no chance that you could score Quant yep. on a play like right. that. You have to think that Pat Casey's argument was did you see where the right fielder was? Because ultimately, that has to figure into this. Right now, Pat Casey's feeling as if the scales of justice have tipped decidedly against them. With the interference call, perhaps a second and third, now you get a force play up the middle on a ground ball. There are two down. You do have one of the best contact hitters in the country at the plate in Nick Madrigal. And this is a big spot for him with two down. Really, for Oregon State, take advantage of this and get a run, if not more than one. Two seam fastball down at 91 miles an hour from what we just saw at 95. And that's okay because that's the two seamer. 91. 95 was the four seamer, which he likes to elevate. Madrigal sitting on a slider. Based on who's out there, based on the situation, you know the Knight likes to go to that slider. Madrigal will go up and just sit there. When he's sitting on something, he doesn't miss it much. The second baseman, he hit it on a line, and it's in the glove of Carson Shaddy. Every single thing in the last hour has gone the way of the Razorbacks. They lead it 4 1. We're through five. Game one of the College World Series. Welcome back. Key place. This baseball game has become a little bit unhinged. An interference call here. Adley Rutschman. He didn't peel off to right. He interfered with the second baseman. Then there was this call, fair foul, and where the runners That's go. That's what took so long is the placement of the runners, Pat. That's okay. uh, by rule, we go with a conservative placement of runners. No, that's what the replay committee had. The replay committee doesn't think about that. He's going to get the second base. That's why they looked at it so many times. That's what took us so long, the placement of runners. So Pat Casey's arguing it should probably be runner on second and third. At the end, in the of the end day, doesn't matter. In the end, the lineout right. doesn't, but still, right. the conservative part allows the umpires, you know, to make the decision to err on the side of caution, if you will. You go to first base. Huh. Tough play. Why'd we do away with chalk down the outfield lines? It's a, <laughs> such a simpler decision. You see it fly. And on the dirt, you would see it probably kick up. On the grass, you don't. Oh! Yeah, oh. Really big out with Madrigal because you had, of course, Larnick and Rutschman coming up. And he hit that ball right on the nose, right at Carson Shaddy. Oh. Right, and that fifth inning started off with Carson Shaddy with a walk. Been very patient today. Two walks so far this evening. The senior seen the ball very well. Not there. Chamberlain throws a wicked slider, and Rutschman throws him out at first. Third strikeout, eighth of the game. Guys, one thing worth pointing out after the interference call happened, Nick Madrigal was in the Oregon State dugout and he saw the body language of everyone in there being very frustrated, disappointed. He went up and down the dugout saying, We will not let this affect us. We will not let this affect us. Now, of course, things unraveled after that, but it's just worth reminding everyone that their whole thing this year was unfinished business. You can tell just the intensity in trying to tell everyone, Don't let this be in your head. That's the guy to do it. I mean, it, it just seems like whenever whenever there's a discussion that needs to happen on the field, Madrigal is the one that drives it. He he really acts as a coach standing at second base and clearly does the exact same thing when he's in the dugout. First pitch called the ball, Jared Gates. I think the other thing huh? that we're reminded of, though, is just how difficult it is to navigate through Quan, Grenier, Madrigal, Larnick, and Rutschman. That 
those five guys make it so hard for pitchers that the idea that a three run lead is insurmountable with Oregon State they were really right. it felt they were really close there Madrigal puts that about 10 feet higher that's an RBI then you get Larnick and Rutschman coming up and it's a whole different yep. ball game. It's the beauty of this game. The mental grind of it also. And they do dominate as that graphic shows you after the sixth inning. The old adage of getting into the other team's bullpen it actually still applies at the collegiate level may not work at the major league level with those horses that come out and throw 104 but at the collegiate level you get rid of the starter you're generally going to be better huh? off. Full count three, two. Gates looking for a walk now three and two and you wonder how his left knee is doing made one of the great catches at the College World Series here in 2018. In fact two of the great catches at the World Series came from Gates and Eric Cole in right field. Fastball at 91 Gates gone second out fourth strikeout for Chamberlain since he's come in. We thought there was no way he could make this catch from where he was but he never gave up on it tracked it the entire way laid out completely what better place to do it than here in Omaha. See Knight continuing to stay loose. And Grant Cook comes up four straight strikeouts for Chamberlain. Heimlich started was great. He gave up one hit until the fifth inning and then it unraveled. Oh. That misses in two and oh. There's Luke Heimlich. Oh! And Chamberlain loses the strike zone a little bit. 3 0. Oh. Christian Chamberlain's last nine appearances have been outstanding. Oh. Undoing the <laughs> shin guard again. I think that's the second time he's been caught this week. Undoing shin guard. Pitch is close down. to being down. Cook had a big single and an RBI in that four run fifth. Ball four. That's ball four. Now you can take the shin guards off. The College World Series Finals Oregon State versus Arkansas game two tomorrow at seven on ESPN. Hope you join us for that. Whoever wins tonight has got a chance to walk away with the 2018 College World Series Championship tomorrow night. If we do have a game three, it'll be Thursday and it'll be on at 6.30 Eastern Time, 5.30 Central on ESPN2. Game three has been moved up a half hour. And it'll be on ESPN2. Nine hitter, Jax Biggers. Foul ball. Just trying to think fellas if in fact the calls which have clearly gone the way of Arkansas if this crowd were actually the size of the Arkansas crowd but was the Oregon crowd or the calls had gone against the Arkansas side they would be a little different in this they building sound a little different. <laughs> yeah I think that's fair. <laughs> Runner going and Rutschman will not make a play. He blocked it, but it got away from him by about 20 feet. And now Cook goes into scoring position. Game one College World Series TD Ameritrade Park in Omaha Nebraska opened up in 2011 had been played for so long at Rosenblatt Stadium. Shifted here the game shifted became much more of a defensive low scoring game you got two big offenses in this final.
two and one. Both teams loaded with future major leaguers. A handful of first round draft picks on the field for Oregon State. Blaine Knight win the third round of the Orioles. And Arkansas has got a bunch of future first round picks. What do you see Kyle. Looks like he's trying to miss bats with every pitch. Um, the stuff obviously is good. I mean he four strikeouts since Chamberlain's come into the ball game and he entered in a really tough spot left with the bases loaded. It's like he's just trying to be a little bit too fine in this at bat. And the previous one to Grant Cook. Good one. Three and two. Book out three two. Thirty first year of coaching overall for Pat Casey, twenty fourth at Oregon State. I wonder if he'll be asked after the game, have you ever seen anything like that fourth and fifth inning and what his answer will be? He's ever seen that sort of the interference, the hit batters, the, the call down the right field line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of this game though. You seem to see something you never have about right. every time. You know who says that? <laughs> Kirchin? Our, our friend <laughs> Tim Kirchin. That's a knee slapper. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be on the call later tonight. Cubs and Dodgers as we're through here. We'll continue with the baseball on ESPN. David Ross as well. 3 2, Diddy. Go, go. No. And a walk issued to Jack Spiggers. Think about it. Chamberlain came in. Arkansas hasn't actually put the ball in play against him. There's Schwarbs. Kyle Schwarber was here with Indiana. Of course, Indiana's head coach just moved on to take over in Mississippi State. Cubs and Dodgers next on ESPN. David Ross, the former teammate of Kyle Schwarber, and of course the catcher for a couple of different teams with John Lester who will be on the mound. So some really probably unique insight into Lester on the mound from David Ross in the booth. Five walks, two hit batters. There was an error against Madrigal. And now Eric Cole, he was one of the hit by pitch oh. batters in the fifth. Two and zero for the freshman Christian Chamberlain. Seventeen appearances on the season for Chamberlain, and he has thrown twenty-five pitches this inning. An ERA of three seventy-seven. Fourteen more strikeouts than walks. Dangerous spot with Cole, the leadoff hitter, up at a two-zero count. 3-0. There is activity in that Oregon State bullpen. It looks like Dylan Pierce up and throwing the junior right hander. It's not like he's missing in one spot either. He's missed up, right. he's missed in, he's yeah. missed away. That's that's when there's always concern because it, it may not be a one pitch mechanical adjustment. You got Martin on deck, green light 3-0 you know, or take. Well you take it there anyway. And another walk and maybe the final batter for Chamberlain. Pat Casey is starting to make his way towards the mound. And the base is loaded one more time. He struck out four straight, and then he has now issued three consecutive walks. Chamberlain comes in in a 1 0 count, throws three balls, he walks Heston Kirstead, then yep. four straight strikeouts. Now three straight walks. And since Chamberlain's come in the ballgame, not one ball's been put in play. When the stuff's in the zone, clearly it's very good. The challenge right now is getting that stuff in the zone. 
haven't been following the College World Series, perhaps the most effective reliever, and they're going to leave him in, has been Brandon Iser. Question becomes, do you save Iser for tomorrow night? Or if you eventually take the lead in this game, do you go to somebody like Iser, who's been so great? Interesting here to leave Chamberlain in with the bases loaded, facing Casey Martin. There's Brandon Iser at number 37. You like it, Kyle, leaving him in? I do right now, yeah. Strike one. You like That's it, Eddie? a big call. Big call right there with a curveball. Now that he's 0-1, it'll, it'll change it all up for him. You'd leave but him But a in? gutsy play. The thing is, Martin hasn't looked good against the lefties yeah. here. He's looked great against righties so far in the College World Series. Maybe the reverse splits are what they're going with. Third base, Grant Cook. Second base, Jax Biggers. First base, Eric Cole. And at the plate, Casey Martin. Two strikeouts, reached on an error. Got an RBI. That's Rutschman. He has to be able to block. Pitch in the dirt. Going fastball away, but Martin struck out twice. And I know it wasn't Chamberlain on the mound. It was Heimlich. We threw him slider, slider down. Time for that big curveball in the dirt. See if he can get the chase. 31st pitch of the inning, and it would be huge for Oregon State to keep this at three. High, two oh, and two. Larnick and Rutschman do up in the bottom of the six for Oregon State. Throw a breaking ball here. It's the only pitch so far he's been able to command well this inning. Reached out to the shortstop. Flip to second for the force, and that'll do it. Well, Good pitch. You got Martin to chase. It's only a three run deficit. The best hitters for Oregon State are coming up. Well, Mississippi State and their rally bananas have left the building. This game's been a little bananas. We got game two tomorrow night, 7 Eastern time on ESPN. And as I mentioned, game three, the if necessary game, will be played Thursday at 6.30 Eastern time. It could be seen on ESPN 2. Game one was supposed to be played last night, but rain postponed it and moved everything to today. Wayne Knight back on the mound. He has thrown 78 pitches. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Well, one thing to look back on, depending how this game turns out, Arkansas has left a whole boatload of base runners on the last two innings. A whole yeah, left bunch loaded. of base runners. The last two innings left them loaded. Four runs on two hits, both singles, five walks, two hit batsmen, and left the bases loaded both innings. So far, the key for Arkansas, you have to look at the bottom two in the lineup. Grant Cook and Jack Spiggers, they've been able to get on base five out of the six times. They've had a plate appearances. Keep that up, put the pressure on Oregon State. With this guy on the mound, a guy that knows how to win big games. A slider to start things off with to Trevor Larnick. He's got two doubles. One of them was a rip down the right field line. The other one was a pop up to left when the sun was out. And Heston Kerstad never saw it. Bounced on the warning track and over the wall. Right now, it'd probably be an easy pop out. Right to the glove and a tough pitch. Larnick outstanding on inside fastballs. We've seen him turn a handful of those around. That pitch was right to the glove and now ahead 0 2. A lot of the plate. First baseman was off the bag. Now he retreats to it and Larnick for the first time tonight. Is retired.
Oregon State's been here a bunch. They've also won two College World Series titles. Arkansas has never won the College World Series crown. One of the great track and field colleges. They win national championships in that all the time. They're seeking their first title in their ninth trip here to Omaha. Barrett Lowski is starting to loosen in the Arkansas pen. He's the righty. This is Adley Rutschman. One of his memories of the College World Series is going to be that interference play in which he was called running towards second base. Tried to duck out of the way and instead got in the way of the infielder and was called for interference. It was a game altering play. Sky high on the infield. Biggers, the shortstop, calls for it, backpedals, backpedals, and makes the play. So Larnick and Rutschman retired here in the sixth. Pitch count still relatively low for Blaine Knight. 83 pitches with two outs here in the sixth inning. And even though Lowski was up and throwing just a minute ago, you have to think if you're Dave Van Horn, you want to you want to ride Blaine Knight as far as you can. Three game series to win this one. You know you're going to need that bullpen. We would expect Casey Murphy, the left hander, to go tomorrow. Superman right there. Yeah, Jack DC on the left. President of the College World Series. A terrific and gracious host to all of us at ESPN every time we come to Omaha. Holly and Karen Griego also in the crowd tonight. Always been kind enough to Treat us to some golf out at Oak Hills. Boy, that place is in ridiculous condition. And you're passing time on days where games are rained out or you're having an off day. It's a good man to hang with. Yeah, he is. Part of most of the people at Omaha, how invested they are in the College World Series experience. Here's Time Alone, 2 0. Oh. He got jammed, and that is a souvenir. Nice catch also in the stands. Three and one. If Arkansas hangs on, do more people from Fayetteville drive up? Sure. <laughs> Anybody left? Absolutely. <laughs> you can't fit too many more in here. But yeah, I, I don't think too many are going home. 3 1 from Knight, who hasn't issued a walk tonight. 3 and 2. Well, I can tell you this the ones that did not leave, they're at Bomb Stadium right now, also watching the game. A sea of cardinal red, the color of the Arkansas jerseys, t shirts. Three, two. Staying alive, fouled it off. Think about the players that are making an impact at the major league level that are former Razorback, Andrew Benintendi. Dallas Keuchel, Brian Anderson having a great year this year for the Marlins also. Of course, Oregon State, you think about Jacoby Ellsbury, Mark McLemore, Darwin Barney, and of course, Michael Conforto, who yep. we mentioned tonight. That's high, ball four, and Knight's first walk.
Knight went in the third round of the Orioles, the 87th selection overall, but he has really done well against those drafted ahead of him. Casey Mize went first overall. He beat him. Brady Singer went to the Royals 18th. Ryan Rollison, Jackson Coar, another pick of the Royals at 33rd. He beat he beat them too. And this was before the draft. Pitches with a little bit like that. That's something Blaine Knight can hold on to the rest of his life. Oh, without a doubt. We, we talked about it the other day. We were fishing. And I said, do you, I mean, you beat Mize, you beat Singer, you beat Coar, you beat some of the best guys in the game. Do you think about it any differently? He said, you know, I know in those games we have a really good offense, but we're probably not going to score that many runs just because the guy on the other side is really good. So he said, I, I get that it's not me against him, but I do realize that the margin for error is smaller in those games. High strike, Brettler frustrated by that. And this is one of those games, too. I mean, you know going into this, this didn't feel like it was going to be 9-8. Jack Anderson, who has played a bunch in the outfield, especially when Quan was hurt, number 29, he has come out on deck. Oh! Nope, backup slider doesn't find the strike zone. Count goes one and one, 92 pitches now. Roski continues to throw out there. Knight's body language suggests that maybe he's getting a little bit tired. Reaches here, I think you go get him. It, it, it there just looks like there's some labor right now. Yep. And you can really tell when a guy's throwing a fastball to the glove side, that's a hard pitch to throw. Mechanically, everything has to be over your front foot. You really have to finish through it. Blaine Knight was trying to throw that pitch there and, and was guiding it there. The velocity's still there, but it just has the look of him feeling like he has to do a little bit more right now. West Johnson on the phone and that may have been the discussion right there to the bullpen. You get one guy on it's Lowski's game. And you bring the time run to the plate if in fact you do get this guy on. There's Lowski out there. Guy with a high spin rate. It's a lot of swings and misses. Six strikeouts in six innings. Slider right here. Yes. Try to sneak a fastball by Gretler right there. He gets just a piece of it to stay alive. It's been pretty much his MO all game. You get that swing, that foul ball. Next pitch usually goes down and away. One fastball. That was a good swing too. 93 miles an hour, 96 pitches for Blaine Knight. Knight has not lost a game all season long. 13 and 0. All right, here we go. Two and two. School's out, and before summer officially kicks in for these. Two teams and their fan bases. College World Series to decide. Good battle from Gretler here against Knight. On the ground, a third backing up and throwing a second for the fourth. Martin finds Shadow. No. And it may be the end of the night for Blaine Knight. He walks off, leading by three. 3 4 5 do up for Arkansas when we come back to TV Ameritrade.
it's not, I don't like to think about it, you know, I mean, I love this university, I always have, and, um, you know, I owe them a lot, because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I'm at, they hadn't taken a chance on me, I wouldn't be here. It's going to kind of come full circle, like I said, I'll be happy, but I'm also going to be upset a little bit, because, you know, I love this place. Lots of hugs from Blaine Knight as he just walked off the mound. We'll see if he's done. It certainly appears that's the case. And Dave Van Horn before this game said, look, we would not be here without Blaine Knight. He deserves so much credit for his entire career at Arkansas, but especially this year. And he said it's going to be an emotional night. What Blaine has brought to this team and this program cannot be truly put into words. He said, I just hope for Blaine and his family that he has a great outing and that he can go out on a high note, specifically a winning note. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. So Knight likely now in a position to sit and watch as Heston oh. Kerstad looks at ball one. Christian Chamberlain continues to throw for Oregon State. You know, he's he's an interesting kid because he's he's so even keel away from the field, and there's there's a high level of compete when he's out there. He's not a yeller, he's not a throw glove guy, but obviously an elite competitor given what he's done. And this the stuff is very good. Um, to hear Dave Van Horn and Wes Johnson talk about Blaine Knight, I mean, it's almost like they're talking about their kid. There's just there's a high level of respect, appreciation for what he's been able to do the last few years. He's been a really good one. He knows how to win. Forget about all the home runs that he's given up this season. Most of them, 16 out of the 18, have been 15 out of the 18 solo homers. Solo yeah. homers. And he knows how to pitch according to the score of the game. Yeah. First dad gone. He has not looked good the last couple of nights. He strikes out for the second time tonight. So we're in the seventh. Oregon State has got a really good record. Think about it. They are 10, 8, and 1 when they trail after six innings. As you look at Jack Anderson, who's going on to play left. 10, 8, and 1 might not sound great. The rest of this field is 29 and 124. Wow. They come back and they have the bats to do it. Strike one to Bonfield as he bats for the fourth time. Two ground outs to short and then he struck out in the fifth. All four runs for Arkansas come from the Six, seven, eight, nine guys. This one is on the ground. Good charge over there by Michael Gretler, and he throws to first. ESPN 2, that's where the Cubs and Dodgers, John Lester, Stripling will start tonight. ESPN 2, about eight minutes from now, they will start on ESPN 2, and as soon as we were concluded here, they will. We moved over to ESPN so college World Series action here Major League Baseball action ESPN 2 in about. Seven minutes Dominic Fletcher. Right field. Larna going back at the wall can't get it. He slams into the wall Fletcher to second and he's in there with a double. It's a pretty swing. Comes into this College World Series already with eight hits. This one stays up. Swings is level and through the zone balanced once he makes contact. And Larnack right here gives it all he has, but Fletcher ends up at second base with two outs in the top of the seventh inning. Team high 16th double of the season for Dominic Fletcher. So after two fairly quick outs. Carson Shaddy comes to the plate. Huge numbers for Fletcher at the CWS. We'll pitch him very carefully. Left handed here, Jared Gates, one for three, is on deck. Carson Shaddy. Saw what he did in the Super Regionals, ended up being the MVP of that Supers against South Carolina. Same pitch, a little late again at 92, he fouled it off, and it's 0 and 2.
been an up and down night for Christian Chamberlain. Walked a career high four. He's also now tied his career high with five strikeouts. Nine of the ten he has faced have not put the ball in play. On the corner he gets the call. Strike three. Shaddy retired. Bottom of the seventh. Eight, nine, and one do up for the Beavers who tend to bounce late in games. Welcome back everyone. The NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One. Game one. Best of three. This year SEC Arkansas Pac-12 Oregon State. Play night out of the game. Six innings, seven hits, one earned, six Ks, and a walk, 97 pitches. He is 13 and 0 on the season. Got a chance to pick up win number 14 here at the World Series in Game One. Now Barrett Lowski, the junior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, who has just been filthy once the NCAA tournament started. The Yankees picked him in the 17th round. 25 appearances at 286 ERA, 64 strikeouts, 27 walks. You see a lot of fastballs from Lowski too. So far in this College World Series, two appearances against Texas and Texas Tech went four and two thirds innings, walked one, struck out seven, did not give up a run. Now, Eddie, we got all these numbers. This is Oregon State's time. They have scored half of their College World Series runs in the seventh inning or later. 24 of the 48 have come in the seventh inning or later, and they have already overcome two three run deficits to win at this year's College World Series. All that mean anything tonight? Absolutely not. Uh, for for Arkansas, they believe in what they have in the bullpen with Lovsky coming in right now. They believe this is a good matchup, and the reason being is you got eight nine coming up. These are two important outs to get. Start off this inning. Oregon State, on the other hand, can't pull that magic off every time. No back didn't look good on a 92 mile an hour fastball. But there is a great awareness right. I should say Anderson who's uh, in there for the left fielder no back. There is an awareness. There is, Oregon State. Th We've there, done is this. An, there is an awareness. But this is the matchup you want right here when you got Anderson at the plate you end up hitting low ski and then after that you got Cronin that can come in for the ninth inning. They believe in their relief court. Good pitch called strike two. Anderson came on as a defensive replacement. Oh, in left field for Novak. This was the original lineup they had yesterday for game one before it was rained out. And then Novak got the nod today. Arkansas will counter all those numbers by saying we are 40 and 2 when we lead after six. Good pitch. A little wrinkle in that one. So even though the fastball isn't elevated, three pitches right there from Lowski, all are strikes. All are fastballs. Watch where the swing is. And this is the one thing you're going to see with a high spin rate fastball. Even when it's down in the zone, it's still holding plane a lot longer. And that swing goes directly underneath it right there from Jack Anderson. That's what Lowski's going to do to you consistently. And he wants to ride it up in the zone, but even there, got to swing right underneath the fastball. Looks like it had a little cut to it. Yeah. And a little jump right when it gets to home plate. Now is that an optical illusion. Is it possible that a baseball picks up speed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Can I retract that. <laughs> well everybody says it late life. <laughs> Pull that. <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> what What's real is the spin rate and that just creates that illusion. If you look at the release point that he has it's low. Reminds you a lot of Craig Kimbrell yeah. at the major league level where you see a lot of swings and misses underneath that baseball. It seems when you're at the plate that that ball's just rising. It's just holding the plane. Oh! Great look from behind home. Just below the knees, call the ball two and one to Zach Taylor. Then you go back to the top of the order. Oregon State's going to have at least one real good chance to break through against Arkansas with Quan 
and the guys that follow him. That's a fair ball down the line, bounces off the wall, may have a play here at second base. Here's the throw, and he is out. That ball took a great hop to Kerstow, and you can see it develop on that throw to deny Taylor of a double. Give a lot of credit to Kerstad right here. The ball's hit solidly, but he reads it well. Takes a gamble, and right where it ricochets, plays it perfectly. And all the repetition and infield practice, all those, all those drills every day, perfectly thrown right there. You have to know the score. You have to be aware of what's going on. And right there, have to be able to stay at first base on a four-to-one game. Beautifully played. How about the route at the end, okay? The route at the end, all of his momentum was taking it directly to second base. And it's it's rare on what a lot of times the momentum is going to take it towards the line. Watch the route because it comes off like that. He's able to take his momentum into second base. The minute that he picks that ball up, everything is moving right into the throw and in line. Steven Kwan, the leadoff hitter behind 0-1. Oh and two big big out and the way that bounced off and the way that Kerstad played it with a terrific throw yes Carson Shad it didn't bounce the throw you're not going to do it offensively you do it on defense that's a good point I was thinking the exact same thing Lowski 95 up in the zone to get Juan. Take one more look at the great play by Heston Kerstad. Go oh, get it, freshman. He scuffled at the play, but he's not scuffling. Not in left field today. A BB to Carson Shaddy at second base. Erases extra bases for Zach Taylor. Ends up a 1 2 3 seventh for Arkansas. All right, check it out. You got uh, TD Ameritrade here, and also you got the Dodger Stadium, Wrigley Field, Chicago Cubs. They're underway, ESPN2. So we got uh, double barrel baseball. John Lester and the Cubs taking on the Dodgers. LA, since Justin Turner has come back, have been on fire. They're right back in that National League West playoff picture. Cubs stumbling a little bit here lately. Arkansas, Oregon State, top of the eighth inning, game one of the College World Series. Christian huh. Chamberlain stays on. So in a way, you know, Pat Casey has saved a lot of his bullpen yep. bullets by letting Chamberlain go. Bottom of the eighth, the Thunder in that Oregon State lineup will get another chance. Two, three, four, do up. in the zone it's really good it really is good breaking ball Oregon State coaching staff talks about Chamberlain I mean this is a guy that's probably going to be on the weekend next year they're going to push him into a starting role the stuff is better than the size so when you see him go out there you don't think the fastball is going to be low 90s he's really competed grown up over the course of the year 91 and goodbye Gates so for Oregon State you look at Christian Chamberlain and Abel and that's your weekend yeah. that's your Friday Saturday it's all right Abel was freshman Abel was incredible the other night. There's just a four seam fastball. Great shot of the grip right there back behind him. Kevin Abel we saw him walking around old market with his family. He looked like he was probably in ninth grade. <laughs> really? <laughs> <My goodness>. <laughs> <laughs> well that arm is, doesn't look like a ninth grade. No. Arm. You got a baby face. And there he is. <clears throat> that one's going to go to the seats down the third baseline. So a lot of these big time baseball programs like football Kyle they don't rebuild they just kind of keep reloading huh. Yeah and I think you can say it for both of these clubs. Yeah. The interesting thing is both of them missed the postseason two years ago. 
And so it was it was a quick turn to, to get back to this point. A lot of it is the game has a lot of parity right now. I and mean, it's it's not 20, 25 years ago to where it's always the same clubs in. But yes, they have turned into two of the finest programs in the country. One and two. I'm looking Chamberlain that's been the M.O. for Oregon State tonight. 62nd pitch for the reliever misses wide now three and two after going up 0 2. Look out three two. box at TD Ameritrade. Is it far enough back? You never seem to get a foul ball up here. They're very rare. You want to make a play up here? Right, which is very rare. How about we keep it that way? You're not ready? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Eddie in the glove? No. We're good. Two outs, two strikeouts. Hey guys, look at the right hand of Adley Rutschman, the Oregon State catcher. It's got tape on it now. That's, of course, the hand that he uses to get the signs to his pitcher, Chamberlain. Chamberlain was having a hard time seeing some of that. They even put some orange tape on the tips of the fingers there, hoping that he can pick up what Rutschman's trying to call a little bit easier right there. Yeah, a lot of times they'll use nail polish. Major League catchers who do that. But white out also on the, yeah, on the fingers. Oh. Keep them tucked in. Make sure none of the coaches on either side of the baseline see it. Oh. Foul off Bigger's foot. Takes a step to make sure he's okay. The shortstop who bats nine. Two different. Two different tones working right here. <laughs> Something out of a Halloween costume. <laughs> Hot. One and two. And Biggers really destroyed that finger, trying to lay a bunt down. He has since really recovered, but he became a much better hitter. Once he put that big bandage on, he's gone. Good inning for Chamberlain. He picks up his eighth strikeout in relief. Bottom of the eighth, Grenier, Madrigal, Larnick, and Rutschman. Stay the tuned for that. The NCAA College World Series is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? Take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance and say hello to Blaine Knight, who was outstanding tonight for Arkansas, came in 13-0 over the course of the season, the true ace of this Arkansas club. And when he got into trouble, got himself out of it a few different times for Knight. Over the course of this one, six strikeouts and hugs afterwards in what could be his last performance at the collegiate level. A third-round draft pick of the Baltimore Orioles this year. But Knight was outstanding again, has put Arkansas in a great spot. He sure did, and this is the biggest inning now for Oregon State. Down three, they have their two, three, four hitters due up. It feels like if Oregon State's going to come back in this, this ball game, it. they got to do it right here. Oh. And it's the eighth inning, the big inning that so far for pretty much any team in the College World Series. This has been the action inning for sure. Aaron Lowski came on last inning. He struck out two. And gets the call. Strike one there. Carson Chamberlain struck out nine. And this spoke when we went to break with eight. He had struck out nine. Christian Chamberlain. And now you see Cronin warming up 
in that Arkansas bullpen. Two and one leadoff hitter huge in this inning. If he can get aboard for the big boys. Madrigal his last time up hit a shot with two men on a line out right to second baseman Carson Shaddy. Lays down a bunt. Lowski bare hands to first. Got him. Good play off the mound by Lowski to retire Grenier. Perhaps he pulls that down the line a little bit more. He's on. Shows some athleticism there. Decides to bare hand it. And that right there was a the key. Watch how he plants both feet also. Doesn't rush the throw whatsoever. Sees it into the hand and makes a perfect throw to first base. Good point too. Sets that right foot, so then doesn't have to reset after he makes the play. The right foot's already set, can push off of it to make that throw. That's well done. You like the bunt there in a two-one count? I don't mind it, but what I do like is if it was, you have to think foul ball base hit yes, a little yep. bit more down the line. Yeah. Here's Madrigal. He is the fourth pick in this year's draft to the White Sox. That is a strike even though it was dropped I was going to say that looked like a strike and I didn't hear the call because the ball was dropped by Grant Cook but a strike one to Nick Madrigal. Center field, Fletcher, and just like that, two down. Hey, tonight on Sports Center, after the Cubs and Dodgers, Stan and Neil, they'll update you on all the action for Major League Baseball. J.D. Martinez hit his 24th tonight. The Yankees had a big lead early. NBA free agency news: the moves the 76ers need to do to land LeBron. Lisa Leslie, the Hall of Famers, in the studio tonight. Sports Center from L.A. after Major League Baseball on ESPN. Elevated fastball and Madrigal flies out to center. So far the key to success for the Arkansas Razorbacks is being able to keep one, two, three hitters off the bases. Two for 12 this evening in this game. You keep those guys off with the big boys coming up, not able to drive them in. Well executed plan so far by both Knight and Lowski. Think about the next level as I remind you the Cubs and Dodgers so many of these swing planes now have launch angles and the transition by major league relievers has been to again throw the ball up in the zone as opposed to down in the zone and Lowski is doing a good job of elevating he takes something off there to change up in there at 80. That's oh, a good point and I tell you Wes Johnson's a pitcher goes for Arkansas and he's one of the main reasons why you see some of these approaches particularly with Barrett Lowski. He's he's a big data guy and with all of his guys tries to figure out what the stuff says they should be maybe not what you think you are but what the stuff says you should be for Lowski the stuff says you should be that high percentage fastball guy ideally pit, pitching up in the zone and it's brought him a lot of success that, that just caught the ball this is the second foul ball he's caught barehanded second one. <laughs> Look at the face. <laughs> Look at the reaction. He's getting a lot of love. Oh, that's two. Yeah, he's in two the right fingers. place to get a lot of love. Have yeah. a night. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're standing for him or the fact that they are a strike away from getting out of the eighth inning. See his wife has the other ball yeah, in her left hand. I did. One two on the way to Trevor Larnick. Love up high. That's where it goes, and he's gone at 93. We talked elevated fastball with Lowski, and this is exactly where he wants to throw it. Larnick can't hold up. That fastball holds plain. Larnick swings underneath, and Arkansas is three outs away from a game one win in the finals.
Now tonight's game track brought to you by Buick. Arkansas has been flat out opportunistic and their pitching has been very very good Blaine night six innings and earned run six K's we've seen Lowski come in they've only got four hits in this one Oregon State makes another error and we have ourselves a three run game heading to the top of the ninth inning Chamberlain has been a bullpen saver for Pat Casey and Oregon State and you think about tomorrow night already and the arms you'll be able to use Remember, Oregon State is played four elimination games. They've won them all. Yeah, I'll tell you the other thing. We, we had talked about the advantage that moving this back a day had for Oregon State today because Heimlich got an extra day. The other advantage is it gives Kevin Abel an extra day. Yep. We weren't quite sure when he could come back. The freshman, I would be surprised if we see him start tomorrow, but potentially could start a game three for Oregon State on Thursday if needed. He has been and was their best starter here. Seven innings, five Ks, three walks against Mississippi State. He just looked very in control, and yes. if you didn't see him, three pitch arsenal. Oh, Ouch. <laughs> Travis Katzenmeyer feeling <laughs> the pain of Adley Rutschman. I think we got a full. Ooh, yeah, that must that really must have hurt. <laughs> oh, finish on the end. <laughs> One and two. Awfully impressive, huh? Barrett Lowski and what he yeah. just did to that part of the batting order. And what this kid has done. I remember when he came out of the base or when he came into the baseball game. Madrigal. One down. Chamberlain comes in, he's a freshman, the bases are loaded, and yes, he ends up walking the first hitter. But since then, he's been incredible. And he's kept Oregon State right in this thing. Nine strikeouts out of the bullpen. The Arkansas hitters have struck out 13 times tonight. I mean, you look at the board. Arkansas struck out 13 times. They had four hits yeah. in the game. They've walked a lot also. Two they hit have. by pitches. Yep, they've had some help. That big fifth inning was huge. Two hit by pitches in that fifth inning. Also go along with a walk, two hits. Game's made up of nine innings, but you could certainly go back to that interference play, which was a huge call in the game, and then what happened in the subsequent next half inning. At the very least, that interference play cost Oregon State a run that yes, was that's that was undeniable. that was happening yes one two right spoils one that thing was almost by him when Martin fouled it off. One of the defensive plays of the night made by that guy, Heston Kerstad. A ricocheted ball on a fair ball down the line. Picked it up. Fired a C to second base to get Zach Taylor in what would have been a double. And this one goes to the seats. An important throw. It would have had the top of the order coming up with a. One out, runner at second. The ability as a freshman to be able to separate what you've done at the plate defensively, very impressive. Foul ball. Foul ball fielded well. Really good play. Tag. A lot of foul ball by Michael Gretner. One more look at this Heston Kerstad play. Yeah, you, made a, you made a great point right here as he goes around this ball once he realizes it's going to ricochet off the railing makes a perfect throw there to second base and love the emotion but knowing the score is very important as a runner see it all the way and decided to go for two as soon as it was hit one two gone boy Chamberlain's been really good that's the 15th strikeout 15th strikeout in the game and 10 overall for Christian Chamberlain out of the pen. 
There's Kerstad who was a victim twice. What's Kerstad going to have to do to kind of find that stroke again? One of the better hitters on this team. There you Thanks. go. How about that? Finds one all the way into the gap, and it will get to the track and nearly the wall. Something like that go the other way. And, and that's his swing. Going the left center field. It's a true swing. But most importantly, this is a pitch he's been letting go early. He's been getting behind 0-1 on the fastball. And this time he hunts it, goes right down the middle in a beautiful approach. Stays back behind it, perfectly done. All the weight in the back leg and then transfers it perfectly through to left center field. You see Stephen Kwan out in center, and I think that's one thing to watch as this goes on. He's an elite center fielder when he's full speed. And on that one, you could tell he, he was he was guarding he was guarding against the hamstring right there left hamstring injury Quan back in the lineup today for the first time in a few days. You could tell it was on his mind on that route. Ball one to Bonfield blocked by Rutschman. There are little things in games that affect perhaps the next game that Quan issue may be one and the idea that Kerstad swung at a first pitch fastball yes. and was able to make contact could change the entire way he leaves the game tonight and thinks about coming to the park tomorrow because I know we haven't seen a lot of it in this college World Series he's an elite hitter yeah and, and oh, there yeah. is there is real power to left center field which you saw right there that's kind of his comfort zone if you go fastball middle away he is more than happy to take that ball to left center. Expect Bryce Femmel to start tomorrow night? I don't know who Oregon State goes tomorrow. They could. Um, you can start Icer. Yep. I mean, if, if you wanted to roll the dice, and it's not really a roll of the dice based on what we've seen here, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if we see Brandon Icer to start. How many can Icer give you? Cross them up right there. Gotta go talk to him. Five? Rutschman was expecting fastball. Instead, Shamlin gave him a, a curveball. And not a good feeling as a catcher. I mean, he went five and a third against Mississippi State, so you know that at least for Brandon Icer, he has the ability to go that deep. That was on Friday, so he'd be what on four days, so kind of typical major league rest. Yep. Like the Casey Murphy, the junior lefty, yeah, will go for Arkansas. Hunt. Field changeup, Bonfield. Real changeup, not giving up. You have a left-handed hitter and Dominic Fletcher yeah. on deck, even though he hit a double last time up on a breaking ball up. A lot of respect for the power of Luke Bonfield. Fletcher just gave that sign. He threw him a changeup. Here's your 3 1. And a good battle back by Chamberlain to get it to 3 2. I go curveball right here. See if Luke will chase. 0 for 4 so far this night, but with one swing, he could really go to get to the juggler of Oregon State. Make this a five run game. Tried to. <laughs> Chamberlain's got nine strikeouts in relief and now ten. You think about the aluminum bat era, so that's 74. Only two have more in a college World Series game. One of them is Calvin Chirault. He had 11 for Texas. And Chad Garoto out of Mississippi State against Indiana in 13. So he's he's dealing with some wow. heady, heady company. Only now Chiraldi with 11 has more. So his next strikeout will get him to 11. And he will 
join an elite group in relief. The College World Series Finals, Oregon State versus Arkansas Game 2, tomorrow at 7 on ESPN. <laughs> While all that was going on, Jack Henley has come on to be a pinch runner for Arkansas at first base. Game is no one warming up in the bullpen. Last time Fletcher was up, he ripped a double over the head of Trevor Larnick. Was on a first pitch breaking ball up. Oh! Inside ball one. Always fascinating. You see somebody like Fletcher talking with Rutschman, and when they meet again on the baseball field. Yeah, it'll actually be USA Baseball. Popped up. Rutschman can't see it. Look out! Look out! Both bang into each other, and that ball is dropped. Yeah, that's that's Gretler's ball the whole way. Rutschman saw the ball late and then he went for it. He never looked to see if Gretler was coming for it. Yeah, Gretler was coming in hot also. Most likely, Rutschman didn't hear him, but you're right. Uh, this is Gretler's ball all the way. You see him off the line, so he's got to get there. Sees that he's coming in hard. And Rutschman never looks to see where Gretler is at all. Rettler never calls it. Nope, nobody's yeah. mouth is moving. That's why I wanted to see it. I, never I, calls that's it. the one he's got to be screaming right away because yeah. coming in, that is his play the entire way. Good pitch, one and two. Ah. Rutschman used to play as a kicker for Oregon State football. It was one of the great meetings that Pat Casey ever experienced before this year when Rutschman called and said, we got to talk. So I'm not going to play football anymore. He didn't know what that conversation yeah. was going to be about. He assumed he was going to go and kick again. Did feel like he'd be better off as a baseball player if he dedicated himself just to baseball, but he wasn't going to get in the way of Adley Rutschman and his football. So that was the good side of it. Then he had to go tell the football coach, I'm not going to be doing this anymore. Kick anymore. <laughs> I mean, this is a kid that kicked a 63 yard field goal in high school. In high school. Recovered his good. own onside kick in a college <laughs> football game. <laughs> Tackled Christian McCaffrey at one point. I mean, this is a, this is a yeah. big time athlete. But I think we will find, and we already have, that when he commits himself full time to baseball, that the, the upside is is unending for Rutschman. One two to Dominic Fletcher. Mm. No swing. Rutschman thought he did. Could have gone either way. Yeah. Rutschman will lead things off in the bottom of the ninth for Oregon State, trying to make sure it's only a three run deficit. And it will be. Fletcher spinning around. He strikes out. What a performance by Christian Chamberlain. He'll get some love. 11 Ks in relief to match Calvin Giraldi all time out of the bullpen.
Arkansas in the driver's seat, leading 4-1, heading to the bottom of the ninth. Game one winner has won the series 11 of 15 times since the best of three series began back in 2003. Eight of them have been sweeps. There is this 2006 note. Oregon State lost their first game at the College World Series like they did here in 2018 and the first game of the finals against North Carolina before coming back to win the championship. They are the precedent. They were the first team to do it. As Rutschman questions that ball being called a strike. Between the five six hole Adley Rutschman leads things off in the bottom of the ninth the ball not fielded cleanly by Kerstad but a single for Adley Rutschman that's a good start in the bottom of the ninth. And Corona continues to warm and I think that we will see him right here Wes Johnson on the phone down to the bullpen just to make sure but the left handed hitting Tyler Malone coming up. Loski's already got you six outs. I would expect that we would see Cronin right here. Loski has been really, really good tonight. Has not thrown a lot of pitches. Only 22 of them. Chamberlain on the other side has been a bullpen saver for Oregon State. That's it's an interesting point there, Rab. I mean, only 22 pitches. He got six outs. He's still yeah. hot tomorrow if you want him. I don't think it's a point to where you'd have to worry about bringing Lowski back back to back days. Cronin is the closer. He's got 13 saves on the season. The next one would set a school record at Arkansas. It would be his 14th. Lowski done. And here's Cronin. He's Matt Suggs, Colby Suggs, back in 2013. A little drama here at the World Series. Oregon State leadoff man on in the bottom of the ninth, trailing by three. Come back, everyone, to this 4-1 Arkansas. Game one against Oregon State, College World Series, best of three finals. And the wheel's starting to spin here in the bottom of the ninth. Leadoff man, Adley Rutschman on. Matt Cronin, the sophomore. Who comes in with some very impressive numbers, a 315 ERA and 23 appearances, 56 strikeouts, 13 walks. Just 23 hits allowed against Cronin in 45 and two thirds. Opponents are batting 150 against him. It's elite stuff from the left side. He will be one of the back end guys for Team USA and the national team this summer. Fastball into the mid 90s. And similar to what we saw from Lowski, he's going to throw a high percentage of fastballs. If you haven't seen him pitch yet and you follow Major League Baseball, think Sean Doolittle. Yes. On the mound. Elevates that heater. An effective one at that. Tyler Malone, Michael Gretler on deck. Everybody is standing on that Oregon State bench on the top step. Rutschman, the leadoff man aboard. has reached base twice. He was the guy who hit the ball that led to that interference call against Adley Rutschman, which led to a 3-6-4 double play. Another one at the knees at 95. That's filthy. That's placement also. You look at it, 95 right in the corner, looking for something middle in, you're not going to get it. Another reason for the switch from Lowski to Cronin. 100 point difference on the batting average from Tyler Malone. I'm going to guess the gun was wrong there at 76. Just going <laughs> to, just guessing. You know, goes. Elevate the fastball at 76 there. <laughs> A 
One more base runner. You bring the tying run to the plate. Good, good there. Exactly where Corona wanted to throw it and a good take from Malone. That's the one he wants him to swing at, especially in an 0-2 count. Oof. 96 on the hands. And there's one down. That plays. The play's big. Yeah. I mean, there's no secrets with Cronin. You know exactly what he's going to try to do. The challenge, Eddie, and, and you know this is a hitter. I mean, that's just not an easy one to lay off of. You know he's going to try to elevate the fastball. It's still hard to hold your hands up. Well, sometimes the biggest mistake you can do as a hitter is to look right down the middle. You might have to meet him where he lives. Think up the entire time. He doesn't really elevate way up. But in that upper quadrant, he makes a living up there. Oregon State batters have struck out 10 times. Arkansas 15, 25 in the game. Gretler, ball one. They have not won a College World Series right, title. Winner of game one has gone on to win 73% of the time. Blaine Knight started and was very good. Right field towards the seats, and it's going to get into him. Matt Cronin provides a lot of velocity coming in, so you get the good part of the bat on it get some velocity heading the other way. Be interesting to see if that guy's in the lineup tomorrow night Stephen Kwan. Hooking. Wow. Turned around 93 and just pulled it foul. I'll just elevate it a little bit more. And in. I, I think sometimes the biggest mistake that pitchers make when a guy pulls a ball down the line is you, you feel like you shouldn't go in. I think it's when you do go in. I mean that, that's why, because if, if he does that again, he's gonna hook it 30 feet foul. And it's, if it's a guy that's 50 50 fastball and let's say change up after pulling a fastball like that you know what you're going to get the change up but he makes his living here with this pitch the heater. Andy Armstrong has stepped into the on deck circle for Oregon State one two chases it he's gone. Second strikeout for Cronin, 11th of the game for Arkansas pitching, and they are out away. Credit Arkansas's pitchers tonight. This was an Oregon State team that came in hitting 351 and averaged almost 10 runs in five College World Series games. They have been held to one. Yeah. 
20 RBI in the season, two homers for Andy Armstrong. These fans are fantastic. Yeah. They are. Yeah, I know you had a chance to go down to Bomb Stadium this year, and it's one of the greatest settings in all of college baseball. They are incredible fans, and they have come by the thousands to Omaha this year. Oh. 2 and 0. Oh. Mandatory take right here. He's looking at third base. 2 0. -oh. You're down three. No need to swing here. Zach Taylor, the number nine hitter on deck. 2 0. -oh. Big pitch in this at bat to Andy Armstrong. 2 and 1. He took a little bit off of it, and for him, that's still 93. Yeah. I'd love to have that problem. Take a little off and pump one in at 93. Shortstop, game over. Arkansas takes the first. They win it four to one behind Blaine Knight. He stays unbeaten and perfect on the season. And they're one win away from their first College World Series title. Well, this is what good late pitching does to a really good offense that has stifled other teams late in games. Pitching will control great hitting, and that's exactly what happened tonight. Knight was outstanding, so was Lowski Krona to finish it off. And a big sign tonight, Grant Cook who swung the bat better for Arkansas had a big hit in that four run fifth for the Hogs and in the end those four runs in the fifth were all they needed.